What's up, chat? We, we gonna start in a second, you know it's Tuesday. We just got back from Tacoma, Seattle area. Niggas is tired. But it's fire to give you guys another great episode of Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Woo woo. If you're ready for a Gills Arena, throw your zeros up in the chat. Hit us with them zeros. It's zero. What kind of zero are they doing? This one or like the blood zero? Uh, just, we're not gang affiliated. <laughs> we are not gang affiliated. <laughs> we want no smoke. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh. I see you, LeBron's at 31. Appreciate that zero. They said no gill, let's go. Niggas are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wait, let me get in the chat room. This is just arena. Yo, Science Arena today, what y'all want to talk about, chat? All snacks. We talking all snacks today. He said what? All snacks. Is this my, is this my Cream shoot all in your mouth, glitter. Angela, this is my one. So they said somebody got to give Gil an edible. Right. Wait, wait. We try, you get us to 10,000, we can do that. Y'all ready to start this thing? Yeah. 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 Let's get the show going. Appreciate y'all hey, for waiting. Hey, everybody, everybody geeked up today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we back. We back on. Back. I'm back. <laughs> back on. Agent Zero. Change the game. Put that respect on his name. Look, with the honor call for greatness, the chosen of you. Carry the gift of genius Who do what they do Who possess finesse of less With desire it's true I'ma say it loud None other than who Some swear by Nikes Others love Adidas Rappers be rocking crowds I'd rather rock arenas You may have a nice shop You super set with the pill Who made the zero famous It's Gil Hold me fire He wet Cold as the Pacific Some dudes try to guard him No need to be specific He dazzled up the crowd As a wizard for years Was 100% real It's Gil Welcome back to Gills Arena, presented by Other Dog Fantasy Rope, boy! That was hey, loud. Hey, let's be honest. Okay. I'm on, I'm on four cups of coffee. I'm just late. <laughs> you, you hopped I'm, up? I'm a little why amped. Late? So why were you late today? <laughs> huh? Why were you late? Because I was drinking coffee. <laughs> you was late because you were drinking coffee? Yeah. A mess. A mess. <laughs> yeah. You, you, on, you, you wired today? First of all, who said I was late? I live here. I did. It's your show. I live here. I was just upset. You <laughs> I was just upset. You two said you was late. Oh, yeah. they, was, they threw the zeros up, though. Oh, they threw the support. zeros up? Yeah. Welcome back to Gil's Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy with the living legend Gilbert Arenas. We got Brandon Jennings in here. They loving the fit. Thank you. 
I like that. Got slow grind? Slow grind? Slow, slow grind. grind. Slow grind. Yeah, slow grind. Yeah, I got like my that. slow grind on. Yo, those you said I got my what? Got your chunk glass on. Those are hard. Those are hard. Now those are hard. Fresh off doing work at the curry camp. We see you hit about seven, eight, nine in a row. Yeah, man. Oh, he was cooking. Yeah. Nah. Half court, one dribble. One dribble. That's one all you elbow. need. That's yeah. it. That's it. All I need is one. We got Miko <laughs> Grimes back in the arena. Welcome. Chat yeah. loving the outfit as well, Miko. I can't like, read a lot of the comments, though. Is he, is Not he, appropriate. We back. We back. It's back. It's back. <laughs> the estrogen is back in the room. What y'all laughing at? That was the gist of the, the chat commentary. Oh, um, well, it's Tuesday. I'm here. Okay. So here's what we got cracking today. Uh, Team USA cooked in their first exhibition game in preparation for the World Cup. But is this roster strong enough to bring back gold? Lakers gave Anthony Davis the richest extension in history. But does AD deserve the BAG? That is bad for all of those who can't spell. And NBA champion Thomas Bryant is pulling up to the arena to talk about his past and his future. But before we get into all that, obviously the show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. If you have not done so already, download the app. Use promo code Gills Arena. They will match your first deposit up to $100. And we're doing our multi-fan, special multi-fan segment. If you are signed up to Underdog Fantasy, you drop a question in the chat. Use your uh, Underdog username. They will give you a $50 bonus right away. You get that 50 on top of whatever else you don't put in there. $50 free dollars. All you got to do is ask a good question. Support the movement. And if you want to watch this show and you can't watch it with us, we're on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcast. I think we were number five or number six basketball podcast. Oh. We were f- No Chill and, and Guild Arena. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's like number one. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's number one. You know what I mean? Good shit. I got two slots. Good shit. That's number one. We fresh off, off Seattle, came with the Zeke in. You don't want to give Isaiah Thomas some love real quick. What are y'all thoughts just pulling up to the Zeke in, eighth annual, first annual for Gills Arena in the building? Man, listen, that was, that was a big weekend. Um, you know, usually it's just, you know, small gym. You know, you're going to have players in. But, you know, the fact that it was... Two gyms going on. I mean, shit. I don't even know how many people was in that whole building. Yeah. And I mean, staff, he had to be pushing at least about 100 people in the staff. You know, yeah. that's on a minimum. Just to show that it was, that like, that function was A1. So um, you got to give it up to him. You know, that was, that was an amazing event for real. So shout out to Isaiah Thomas, who we got to sat, sit down with for a good 45, 50 minutes. We also got Nate Robinson pulled on us, pulled up on us unexpectedly. But well, we got both those interviews coming very soon for you guys in the next week or so. Both, both great interviews, two players with a lot of unique perspective on life and on the game. But let's talk about you, Brent. Obviously, you, you was cooking over at uh, Steph Camp. Yeah. Pulled up, played at the uh, Zeke end as well, had a little hamstring yeah. situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you, you was letting it fly on Twitter. Uh, you know, you was talking your talk yesterday. Had to be let it be known where you stand in California hoops lore. So you said, I'm the most influential basketball player to ever come out of California. Oh. Talk your shit. Yeah, just remember that. Let's hear it. Let's hear. <laughs> just remember that. Just remember that. <laughs> so actually, a lot, a lot of people responded. And before we start, we got to just say most influential doesn't necessarily mean the best, right? We have no. a lot of great players no. that have come out. So I don't yeah. think that's what you were necessarily saying. No, I'm not saying I'm the greatest. But, but when you say most influential, why are you the most influential Hooper to come out of California? Uh, I think my path. Um, and I've been that guy since... Sixth, seventh, eighth grade, and you know I can validate that point with guys like Slappy, um, Sean Brandon, um, Wayne Slappy, yeah, Wayne Sean Brandy, Rancho um, Park legend, uh, Pooh Jetter, um, you know Darrell Wright, just a lot of LA guys, Baron Davis, a lot of guys that's been been around since since uh, to see me since I was young, um, and then you know my path leaving Dominguez. Um, Like, who leave Dominguez to go to Oak Hill? Like, that's not, like, something that's in the norm. Um, And then, you know, creating an opportunity for kids to get paid, you know, from high school on up. So, you know, I just think my my path has always been, like, different and just unique at the same time. And like I said, you have probably one of the first mixtapes to come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your career kind of was in line with the social media era, the the YouTube and all that stuff. We had a lot of great players come through, but you can't find a lot of video on those dudes. And you were one of the first dudes. You know, we always talk about you in the McDonald's game, rocking the high top. High top like, just, yeah. you know, <laughs> bringing it back. The, the Gumby. Gumby. Yeah, yeah, the Gumby, the Gumby and the Jordan yeah. game. Um, but, yeah, I just thought, you know, I was just unique and I was just always different. Um, I, didn't go, I didn't just do the norm. Mm-hmm. Um, I was always felt like I was taking a risk to try to be the first or to try to do something different. So when you talk about California basketball, yeah. you know, we got the, the North, which, you know, 
more respect to him yeah. than Southern California. So you, you mean the entire state or so SoCal or? No, I'm the, the entire state. The whole California. state. California. Everybody. Like, like everybody. everybody. Like, every, like, like, yeah, top to bottom. Like, All the way up to Humboldt. California, I think I just felt like California basketball was down for a period of time until I made the decision to go to Oak Hill and to put us on a broader stage in front of everybody. So I felt like I had to go to the East Coast to show that, you know, we ain't no punks and we ain't weak. Ooh, he had to, he had to be the Snoop Dogg. Huh? He had to go to New York East Coast ain't kick down the buildings. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you. Yeah, and, and then going to a powerhouse like Oak Hill, I felt, um, you know, 11th, 12th grade, averaging 32, Naismith Player of the Year, um, you know, mixtape year, all that. So I just felt like my influence for California guards, you know, out of everybody was just, I, I just feel like I'm the best. So what other players out of California would you put on that list of most influential players with yourself? I mean, we got guys like Jason Kidd, BD, Paul Pierce, from this kind of modern yeah. generation. Um, Harden, Westbrook, all those guys. Jason Kidd. Um, you have to go Baron Davis. Um, me. The Ball brothers get some love? Their dad does. The dad, yeah. LeVar Ball the was... Dad, the dad does, but the, the, the kids for sure, but the dad did a lot, you know, for them. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. How about Gil yourself when you think about California hoops lore? You with, the same, the with the same swag? Um, Who had that? Like, Shea Cotton had that swag in high school. Like Shay, um, See, I like guys like Wesley Stokes. Yeah. Long Beach. Oh, yeah, wait, Wesley, like, like, yeah. Like, Wesley has the long hair. He went to Mez, uh, uh, Missouri. 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 Yeah, 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 Missouri. Missouri. Yeah, Missouri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, his swag left him. Um, he had that long perm. But I guess, like, when you talk about just the overall, like, game changer, you know, going, you know, going straight from high school to overseas, um, that was different, no matter how... You know, unless you just went straight out of high school, but what, what California kids went straight out of high school? Darrell, didn't Darrell? Darrell, yeah, Darrell. Yeah. Um, Darrell kind of burst onto the scene. Like he was, you know, he was known out here, but he's a baseball guy. Yeah. yeah. Tyson. Ty 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 Tyson. Because Ty I remember in was it eighth grade, seventh grade, he said, "Don't send him no college letters. He's going straight pro." Yeah. yeah. Like damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Tyson came on the scene. He had the bowl cut. He was coming from up north. Like, you know what I mean? He got a reliable barber after that, but I just remember seeing that dude. But when he first came, it was like, who's this big dude with a bowl cut just yamming on everybody? Yeah. Then obviously as time progressed, you know, he leaked up, got the good barber. Dude, I see you in all blue. We got to talk about Super Crip when they talk about most influential. <laughs> when have you seen a college coach refer some, to somebody as Mr. Crip? Like, you know, that was his name. Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> like, yeah. They, we, didn't like, know his, we didn't know his name was David Hamilton. It was just Super yeah. Crip. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then at one point he changed to Super Duper Crip, but... You know what I mean? Like, do you guys give Frank Nitty any credit? Like, you guys saw he got a Jordan shoe. Like, he's never played in the NBA. Like, he's never played on that stage, and he has an actual shoe. Like, I don't think I've ever he does? He heard of. Yes, two different colorways so far that I've seen. No, that's, that's hard. Real. Never played in the NBA. That's hard. That's real. I mean, that's Shout real. out to Frank Nitty. Mm -hmm. Another guy we could throw out there too, Deshaun Stevenson, your your former teammate. Yep. He was, running yeah, yeah, he, he was running shit. Yeah, he was running shit. He had swag up north. Yeah, he was running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Up north, though. Ebo. Up north. Yeah, he was running Fresno, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's our group. Yeah, yeah. He was we, running shit. We used to go play yeah. on Fresno. That shit used to be so terrible up there. No disrespect to the city, but, yeah. you know. No, no, no. It was like a long line of it's, motels. It's disrespect. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, to make that, you know, you come from L.A., you got to go play in Fresno for that Memorial Day tournament. Oh, but he used oh. to roll in the gym two, three deep around his arms. Just, he was like, all right, this dude. Ray Young. Yeah, two-way Ray. Yeah, Biggest calves in LA, uh, California <laughs> history. But yeah, he had the slam, uh, diary, and all that good stuff. Yep. But, you know, yeah. speaking okay. of uh, repping for the blue and the red and the white, uh, after getting serviced in a scrimmage against the select team last week and then redeeming themselves this weekend after Steve Kerr moved Anthony Edwards into the starting unit, Team, team USA got their first action Monday night showcase game against Puerto Rico. They looked pretty rusty in the first half. I think they was only up like seven, came back to smack Puerto Rico after that. It started. You said came off, wait, wait, he wasn't starting? So uh, no. I think when they got smacked by that select team, because we saw that break, uh, you were, <laughs> were in the chat talking wait, who about didn't it. Start? I'm not doing this. Anthony. Oh, you said Dina's guy, Gil, we're going to get to that too. I'm not doing this. <laughs> You're not, I'm not doing it. Go ahead, this. talk about it. We're not doing this. All right, we're not doing this. Speak for your Adidas brethren. You got nothing to say? <laughs> Nothing nice. You, Sally, you have a great Forget the shoot. Forget the shoot. We, nice we already know. <clears throat> what makes you think, you, like, who, who on the team is better than him for him to even come off the bench? And why? Fuck, the, fuck the shoot. Like, I understand the shoe companies. Like, I get it. But as a coach, 
Stop. What was the reason? Like, the, what? Like, was it like he came late? He no, was out of shape. No, no, nothing. Really, nothing. He's not starting him. No, that's just what the. That's what. That's what they do. What are they trying to test him? Political. No, it's all politics of shoes. That's ghetto. The so, best player on the team is an Adidas guy. It's a Nike sponsor thing. That's very. So, so we need all five guys to be in basic Nike shoes on the court first. Yes. So they're gonna do that. Well, they're gonna try. The, they're gonna try. Then that select team busted that ass. Mm -hmm. You think they would do that to Steph? Has Steph hasn't even been on there, right? Yeah, I think he's going to play in Paris. Wow. If we do that, like, what, what are we saying? Like, what are we saying as the You think same, they would do that? No, the same you think thing they would do that? They always you think say they, they would bring him off the bench? Oh, yeah, yeah they bring him off the bench. If they because do of a that, shoe? If Wardell they Curry. That, no. They would bring Steph Curry off the bench on the USA team. And you know I'm a LeBron guy. They will try. No. They'll put John Moran in front. Ooh, what? No way! It's just, bro, bro, I, think, I mean, but let, let's just be. Let's, okay, let's take let's take it out of basketball mm -hmm. and say this is your company, yeah. right? This is your shoe brand. This is who you're promoting. Would you promote Steph Under Armour or John Morant Nike if you're Nike? See, that's why. But, but they run it. Care? But they because they run it. Yes. So of course I'm gonna want mine. Okay. But we still need the best player. We're gonna win. We're gonna win no matter what. So. But Steph is, just, I mean, Steph is good enough where that don't matter. It's like playing yeah, McDonald's yeah. All-American yeah. game and having to do rock, but, like Burger but King But would shoes. Steph come off the bench? Would he come off the bench, honestly? That would be disrespectful. Out yeah. of pocket. That would be disrespectful. But that's what I'm we would deserve to lose. But, <laughs> like, I hope we lose there. Yeah. Like, I would I hope we too. lose. You'd be rooting for the Euro? <laughs> that happen? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm already leading that way. Be badly, <laughs> like, real bad. Ours is just politics, so it, it don't really matter about the, like, we, we all say it's for our country. But it's no, it's not just for your company. It's just for your shoe company. Yeah. Right. I think that you know, USA Basketball should be all shoe companies should be. They should all have a hand. Like a transformer. It. They should. It should be a transform. So you 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 don't have this this conglomerate that just uses their their power to influence people. Like even from the beginning, like you know when Coach K had it, I don't know how that was allowed. Right. You remember he didn't want one and dones. Right. Mm -hmm. No one and done, and then he gets the, the USA job, and then all of a sudden, every player he has is a one and done player because he gets mm -hmm. to use that mm -hmm. in recruiting. Hey, you know, I'm the USA coach. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you right. come here, you know, I'll make sure you are part of, this, part of this, this team moving forward. That's a hell of a, that's a hell of a cheat code. Right. Like, like basically play the game. Like yeah, play the game you know, and, just come over here and you, you know, make sure you on a tryout so we make sure I look out for you. Like, there's no way, like, half of those Shane Battier on a USA tryout. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Yeah. All his favorite players are on USA tryout. Get the shit. This is stupid. But it yeah. makes sense, yeah. though, because yeah. it's just... Really I mean, I would do it, too, if I'm a coach. But I'm just saying, you know, because <laughs> it was against me, so, you know. You would, you would just have, like, you wouldn't, like, try to go get the real dogs? and try to change the narrative. You're still in control. I'm, no, I'm a college coach, so I, the NBA politics don't have nothing to do with me. So I'm just trying to use my influence with this college program to keep my NBA, I mean, to, I'm gonna use the NBA to keep my college program popping. Mm. Let's not forget America is not really a country, we're a corporation. Ooh. Everything here is about money. Everything from our Capitalism. to our safety, to politics, everything is about money. So it kind of lines up if we're keeping it real. So we gotta we gotta go back to last week. We had Trey Young. Uh, you took a little heat, Gil. Who? I'm just, oh, who took heat? They was coming yeah, for yeah, you. They was coming for you. Came for you. Who? He didn't even know. Who? Who? Is the Alex in here? Wait, in NBA, what, when? But you ruffled some feathers just talking about the stranglehold that that shoe brand, you know, the other brand as you said sponsored had on Team USA. So let's just take a listen to that, and then we'll get back. You see that list, man? They got man. It was sorry ass group. Like I'm sorry. Listen, I'm happy for the people who make it. Right, it's it's cool, like you know, it's cool. It's cool for some of the guys who got there that I don't know, right? That don't some of them probably don't even start on their team. I don't know. I don't want to look at it because it's embarrassing sometimes. Where like you have star play who's really stars that do want to participate, and you just automatically just say, yeah, he's not gonna fit our style. How the fuck you know if he's gonna fit the style or not? You didn't get a man a chance. Or you don't even give a play. Like, there's, there's a reason there's a tryout. Invite us all and let us show you that we can adapt. We're, like, we didn't get to this level because we didn't adapt. We adapted yeah. very well. So don't judge me how I'm playing on my team. Like, my team, this is how I'm playing. Let me show you what I can do around other players. Just give me the shot, but it should be so crooked. Yeah. 
Trey it's, that, it's that sorry ass other brand. You know that other brand. <laughs> the, the other man is. It's that other <laughs> brand. That other brand, man. They be doing too motherfucking much. Gil don't remember so, when he talks shit. No, yeah, we we forgive every but. You talked about the other brand, Grizz. So let me just break down this. I was, I was correct. If Anthony Edwards is the best player coming off the bench because he got on Adidas. Right. But yeah, the current cool. roster has eight Nike players, seven Nike and one Jordan brand, two Adidas players, and, and Walker Kessler. One Who? sneaker. Oh. Uh, Walker Kessler. From, come on, Gil. The Great White Hope. Utah. Oh, I don't know. The latest Leitner. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> One sneaker free agent of Brandon Ingram, and you know. So he gonna be Nike. The young goat Austin Reeves, repping rigor, 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 rigor. All right. So, so we the starting five for USA versus Puerto Rico uh, was Jalen Brunson, Nike, Ann Edwards, Ingram, uh, Mikael Bridges, and Jaron Jackson. So is, wait, that's all Nike, right? Uh, three out of five. Brandon Say it Ingram. Again? So Jalen Brunson, Nike, Ann Edwards. Okay. Ingram's a, a free, free agent, but he wears Jordans. I know. <laughs> Mikael Bridges and, and Jared Jackson okay. Jr. <laughs> so they had all Nike until they moved Edwards. In. Okay. Just let's stop. Okay. And <laughs> our research wants you to know that uh, Walker Kessler was the 2023 skills competition winner. Oh, he, oh, he won a skills winner? Nigga has skills. Oh, so he drew it and threw the ball and Okay, got it. How much he average this year? <sighs> How much he average? You know, I'm oh, just wondering. You know. He was all—he was all-star. Yo, <laughs> was he all NBA? Yo, Gil's hilarious. No, I'm just saying, was he all NBA? Mm-hmm. All rookie, Gil. Oh, we got a rookie. The future. All rookie. <laughs> Great team. All, all rookie. <laughs> so, but just back to that point. So, how much are you really saying that shoe politics plays in the construction of Team USA roster? A lot. I just, I just. Named. If Dame, if Dame and Steph ain't starting in a y'all just named the whole bunch of team in 2024. Oh, then. Crazy. So we're saying so. Okay, this list, right? We can say, as a group, this is probably what F, F list compared to what we have. Damn, girl, I can see minus. No. They, they gotta go to summer school. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. You said this is a C minus. The, the roster. I wouldn't. No, this it's, roster it's, is a C minus compared to I an Olympic say roster. F because it's like you said, everybody got there for a reason. Everybody I can has, pull. I can, okay, here's a D. Okay, D. okay. D. Here's a D. Not F. Do you still F- get F- units? F- list compared to all the players in the NBA. Um, that you that, can that put is together? A, I mean, that is a that, that list is that is that NBA list is nasty. Though. That list got to go to summer they're school. They're still in the NBA. Huh? They're still. They in don't the even NBA. get four units. I mean, when we're talking about C, we're talking about like Jimmy Butler, Ooh, did it, Brown. That would be considered a a C group. Jalen Brown is a C group. In the C, that would be considered in the C group to talent. I, I mean, with that group though, I mean it. it I mean, because who really is the super? Like who's the super? I mean, like, like Booker would Booker would be what B. Yeah, if you get a Booker. Yeah. Zion Williams, that's the B group. John Morant, that's a B group. So this is an F group compared to what we have. <laughs> no one's an F, is all I'm saying. Compa- there are steps to success, Gil. What I'm saying is when you're graded, when we want to say, all right, pick the best 12, right? And then the second 12, the third 12, C, D, F, this would be considered. This is the like, fifth 12? Like just because the only reason is that the we. the fifth 12? Who? This is the fifth 12. This is the fifth 12. Okay. Only only Anthony Edwards would be out of this group. Mm. Yeah. Only Anthony Edwards would be put into the B or C group. Mm. Most likely B. I just don't like calling yeah. any of them. No, I hear you. What about Austin Reeves? <laughs> How many All Stars is on that team? Ooh. Yeah, that's a good. Do you point. remember? There's 24 All Stars. 17 of them are American, right? How many All Stars on that team? Anthony Edwards and uh, JJJ. So just two. But team game, good, that means nothing? Damn, that factor nah, in your thought? That's nasty. Euro style, That's nasty. Brandy. But Man, but you know, I'm telling you, we in trouble. JJ, JJ. We in what, trouble. What, what, what 12 would he make? Would he not make that first 12? Defensive player of the year? Thank you. I mean, unbun right, come you. on, man. Unbun, unbun your hat a little bit, man. <laughs> unbun your hat a little, just a little right bit. Right. As a center? He wouldn't make that roster. Defensive. Defensive player of the year this past no. season would not make would not make that twelve man roster. We don't have bigs. No. Who else are you gonna put? I don't know. We'll just go small. Anthony Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go small. <laughs> not oh, AD. Yeah, he has no, not, use. He has not, no AD use. AD Bam. Right. We'll have AD Bam. He better than AD and Bam. You putting Ben JJJ over Bam or Bam over JJJ? I'm asking you, Gil. This is your Hell show. Yeah. Ask the questions. <sighs> 
You gotta go. Come on, man. All that cripping. Come on, man. All that cripping, Gil. Come on, man. <laughs> Just that. So, gotta follow it up. Do you believe uh, Team USA will take gold in the World Cup? Currently ranked number two behind Spain. Ricky Rubio tapped out for some mental health issues. I don't know how much that'll help or hurt the Spain roster. But do you think this squad no, will take gold? No, because he's calling them an F, clearly. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I don't even think nobody cares. I don't know. Like, I don't even think nobody really cares. Well, I mean, if, I mean, if we win or lose. Go, I mean, they're going to win because it's American still. The F American team's going to beat everybody else's A team. Mm -hmm. That was the point of the argument of... Okay. Of, is that what you really feel? Say it loud. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious to see. I think, look, they, they smashed... What was the last A team that we actually had together? The only A team that the U.S. ever put together or tried to put together was the 92 team. And the Redemption. That wasn't oh, wait. there's there's guys on that team you'd be like, mm, okay. you don't belong. Okay. Right? You can find three or four players that like, no. Christian Like the, with 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 the ninety two yeah, team, you got Christian Leitner, you got Magic, and you got um Larry Bird that shouldn't Bird. have been there. Yeah. yeah, those three for sure. Okay. But for the nostalgia. Like you would have had what? But you had to but, have magic. But, I'm saying, but I know you could, you're supposed to have magic and bird. But okay. you know, by that those years they wasn't okay. who they were. Okay. Right? Okay. Larry Bird back was gone. Yeah. Right? Magic was Yeah. Um But if we would have had Shaquille O'Neal, Dominique, and Zeke, Zeke, that's a whole different Yeah. That yeah. probably would be the best team that ever. So you you think Isaiah Thomas should be because you know, let it be known. You think Isaiah Thomas should have been on that ninety Hell yeah. Over over magic at that point in time? Yeah. Okay. Let it see. Isaiah, we rock with you. Let it be known. Yeah. No, no, some stuff <laughs> is just facts. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But just in but terms of getting... going to win. Are we going to win the gold? What's up? Yeah, I think we win the gold. Okay. But do we care? Are you going to watch? Is anyone here? Like, do we care with this team? Why would I watch? I'm asleep. You're not going to watch Anthony Edwards, Gil? You're Adidas brethren? I'm going to be asleep like the rest of America. I know. When do they, when do they come on? Like... Three, four in the morning. I'm not a drug dealer. <laughs> like, I'm up that late four. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, well, come on, let's be honest. I'm asleep. <laughs> so we talk about this World Cup team. They got to talk about the, the 06 World Cup team. Obviously, you tried out for that team. Uh, you still have a lingering beef Ooh. with Coach K. We seen him at the win. We was ready to pull up on him, Gil. You didn't get yeah, the I was about to get out and just swing on him just a little bit. Just a little yeah. bit swing. Wow. Nah. Wait. But he didn't make the team. Whoa. Oh, oh they cut Cap. you? Don't try that. So what really what happened? happened? Yeah. What happened? Set the record straight. <laughs> All right. So what, happen happen. so what happened was I gave him a call to tell him. It was 4th of July. I gave him a call basically saying, you know, um, I'm just happy to be on this team and whatever I can do, you know, defense, you know, whatever you need me to do, come off the bench, whatever, right? I'm all open. I don't, you know, this is this is a big No thing. ego. Yeah, coming in there. Mm -hmm. So during that tryout, you know, I'm taking charges. I'm doing everything. Unfortunately, they put me on a team that needed just me, right? You know, my, my team was, I had Kirk Heinrich, um, Bruce Bowen, right? Antoine Jameson, uh, Brad Miller, Ooh. right? So uh, should I have, I, I might have had Chris Bosch, don't think I did. But I didn't have no offensive player, so they just gave me the ball the whole time for me to just run amok. And I was carrying, boy, mm -hmm. right? I was, like, to me, it was like, I'm playing against the best starting five that you can ever put against me, and I get to really test my skill. That's how I looked at it. But I wasn't playing in the games, right? Um, and, and, and for ego, I could have really, like, like, hey, hold on. I'm, there's only three of us that's two-time All-Stars, two-time All-NBA players on here, and I want to me, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron. That's it. So, you know, for me to say, yo, hey, I should be starting, I could have did that, but I just played my game. Um, and I remember we're, we're at the Army. We're at the Army base. It was hot. Got on a little Army fatigue, but I'm jumping out the gym. Like, I felt like, like, yo. Yeah. Like, okay. I, I, I don't know if it was the outfit or the heat, <laughs> okay. but I was there. <laughs> like, yo. Uh -huh. Like, yo. And um, I'm doing everything for them. I'm, I'm the guy that they're using to talk to, like, the wounded soldiers who couldn't. Like, I'm that guy. Oh, yeah, it's about to go down right now. You should stand up and clap. Like, I'm doing all that. I, um, and... I pulled my groin, and I thought it was the same. Like, I didn't want that same lingering injury I had my first year in Washington. So I went to Colangelo and said, hey, man, um, I, I pulled my groin. I tweeted, I don't know how long this is going to be lingering, so I don't want to hold up a spot for someone that's trying to make this team. 
Right. And he hurt my feelings with his answer. Mm. And he said, uh, oh, no, nah, you know, you was on a bubble anyway, so if you got to go home, you know, got to go home. Oi, oi. I'm over here like, like oh. bubble. And, like, and, I'm, and I had to run the roster on my team like, wait, hold on. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hold on. Bubble. Oh, God, we, got, we got Kirk Heinrich. We got Brad Miller. We got Bruce Bowen. We got Shane Battier. The fuck are you talking about, bubble? <laughs> so all I heard is he said I was on a bubble, and I was like, I'm gone. Mm. Fuck this team. Right, and then I went in there and said, yo, whoever, 50, I'm going 50, if I can, 70, I'm just throwing out numbers, goddamn it, because it's on, right? That was the shortest flight from China I have ever had in my life. <laughs> it's like I got on and landed. My, my brain was just on running scenarios and plays. Yeah. Like, I'm going to do this when I, oh my God. Like, I'm just running scenarios. So when I landed, when I landed, I, I was on Tupac mode. I remember uh, me and Dave did an article, and I said, and I said in the article, and y'all can, anyone can ask Dave. I said, yo, the way the lineup, the, the way the lineup is, they can, they're not gonna win gold. And I said because you have all of our slashers, all of our slashers and bucket getters are in the starting lineup, and all the shooters are coming off the bench. There's not a balance on this team. Right, all the Joe Johnsons, all they're all on the bench, and you have Dwayne Wade, Chris Paul, Melo was the only you know guy who spread the floor, mm -hmm. uh, Braun, uh, Dwight. It's it's too crowded, and I said it, and then like right before the game, I said just take that part out. I don't want to be that guy, and then he hit me and say, "Damn, you was right. They lost." So he didn't air that part. No, he didn't put it out. Oh. That's what I say. If you ask him, he gonna confirm that I. Damn it, man! I'm gonna hit him up. So you, so you basically you quit before they cut you. Yeah, it, it you was dumped it, in before they the could bubble dump you. is crazy. But just the, the bubble. You tell me I'm on, him clearly, I'm saying, based you, on the yeah. way it looks. You tell me I'm on a bubble, then you you, you cut. You're basically, me, like, saying, yeah, yes. oh yeah, like. So let me go home and you know you know rehab and you know and it, to be honest, it seemed like when I landed, I was fine. It was all healed. Everything was. <laughs> I went straight to the gym. Like I, I don't even remember why I left. That's how angry I was. I don't even remember how I left. Like okay. And what happened the next season? Everybody got it, huh? Everybody got it the next season. Yeah, that was that was demon time. Yeah. That was that was that was that was the demon. That was that year when I came back and I was on I was on demon time. And I think that you know me going in there. Remember, I missed the free throws mm -hmm. with LeBron and James. You know, so I I don't know what the perception of me was, but. During that camp, during that, during, during that trials and stuff, I was doing everything. Like defensively, I was, de like if y'all watch, go back and watch the Brazil game, D-Wade got hit in the mouth, he had to come out, they put me in. I'm picking up, you know, so full you court, stole the ball from Barbosa, yeah. got the offensive rebound, and that turned the game over and we ended up winning. What do you think it was? Like, Adidas. So that's, it was Adidas The age then? of zeros? Yeah, it was only me, it was only me and, it was only me and Dwight on that team. That's what I said. There, there was a picture where Coach K has his foot in front of the white shoe on the big on that picture. We are gang wow. here in America, Damn. right? Really and I, I remember I, after that, I fired my agent. You know, may rest in peace, Dan Fagan, because <laughs> I got I got rumored. No, I got I got respectfully. I, got, I heard that um, him and Mike Tony, him and Dan Tony, and that's why I went at Dan Tony because what I heard was him and Dan Tony was having uh, issues with negotiations with Stoudemire and um, the Matrix, mm. right? And um, it was in the middle of negotiations and they was like, oh, it was, it was using me as a- Leverage. Leverage. Like, All right, so that's what you wanna do? All right, then your, your, per your player ain't gonna play. So I was wow. like, I can burn my own fucking bridges. What do I need you to do that for? So yeah. I fired him right after that. So in your two games versus Phoenix that next season, uh, 54 <laughs> with a W and 31 with an L, though. So yeah. 42 and a half. You yeah, reasonable. Yeah. I'll say pretty I, good. I remember that 54 game. Oh, I remember that. Was, that was, I remember that 54 that, when game. When people ask me, was that my best game? Like, when people say the 60s best game, I said no to 54 is because everything I said, the lead up to that game, and then during the game, or during warm-ups, uh, Dan Tony, they was on a 16-game winning streak. Mm -hmm. Dan Tony, it was the hottest team, number one team in, in, in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And Dan Tony said, you're gonna need more than 50 points to beat us. And it says, well, then I'm gonna score more than 50 to beat y'all. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what, did he Tony, what did he say after the game? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's, it's a default. That's, that's all I remember, guys. That's dip. some hostile shit. Yeah. Oh, I was, no, I was on red, man. No, that was some hostile shit. I was on red. He probably hit you with a hard R after and, the and game. Then, and, then Bla- and then Blazers, Blazers. <laughs> Not the hard R. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the reason I felt in Blazers because I didn't have that same. I said Blazers because, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to read the Blazers test. Coach, coach was there, mm-hmm. right? But I didn't have that smoke. So when I went into the game, it wasn't on. I wasn't on that mode. Do you want to hear what you did in those two games? I was going to leave Well, just out. the one there because that was the first okay. game. Okay. It was trash. Yeah, so the first game, trash. You had nine. And then uh, next game, you had 19. Reasonable. Yeah, yeah it was trash. And then um, I remember, like, <clears throat> it was Skip Bayless because I airballed the game winner. Mm-hmm. Like, tried to do a float. You know, I, was, I didn't do float. I tried to do a float. And then... And then, um, and I remember Skip Bayless then was talking trash about, oh, you say he's going to score 50 and you only had nine, blah, blah, blah. And then um, we're in Seattle. Oh, they got all that smoke. 42 game winner, put my jersey in the middle of the crowd. That's, that was the very next day. I got something for y'all. Man. Y'all ain't going to just be playing with my name like that. Y'all ain't going to play with the name like this. Well, let's keep it moving. Let's talk about somebody else who doesn't like their name play with, uh, Anthony Davis. Lakers dropped a bag on AD. Three-year maximum contract extension worth $186 million. Deal includes a player option for the 2027-2028 season. So AD now owns the richest annual contract extension in NBA history with an average of $62 million. Can you get it? Do we have the smoke thing anymore? You still have it? Can you get some smoke? Man. Rich Paul, generational. Rich Paul's are getting bags. Yeah. Mm. It's a black man, Gil, mm. in America. But we got Miko, we got you here too. You know, one of our most successful social videos. Uh, you know, us talking about AD. You had a nickname for him. Well, I mean, to be honest, like, what else could they do? They don't, there's nobody else they could go get that, you know, that, that would matter, that would at least get the, fa- the fans, the crowd, everybody hype. He's not a terrible player. He's just not there all the time. You know, when he does show up, he looks like the man that we need to get a championship, but it's just props to him for the money. I, I like all black men getting money. I don't care how sorry black you are. Black bags matter. Yeah, black, black bags, bags matter. matter. And so I'm just hoping, I'm going to be like Bubba Dub and say he better get a ring because I don't feel like he he's shown me that he's going to show up the whole game. I'm just going to be happy for him getting his money, and hopefully this season we get him more than 42 games. So did the Lakers make the right decision Given AD the richest three-year extension ever, um, like like she said, there's no you you, you had to. What, yeah. what are you gonna do, right? Um, there's, I mean, there's. <laughs> were you gonna let him walk? Right. <laughs> you gonna let him walk? So you know, it's you know, there's just you know, he was in a situation where he capitalized <coughs> on it, and you know, there's no we can say about it. You know, I don't really care about you know if he wins the championship or not. You still got the rest of the team that has to, that has to help. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for the most part as an owner, like there's a thing that, listen, your contract that you get right now is off of what you did. Mm-hmm. I, I, I hate when people like think that I give you the contract, what are you going to do for me? Yeah. No, 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 no. I won a championship for you. You're paying me for what I did. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think sometimes when we look at, you know, these contracts and we try to figure out why did a player get this, why, because of what he did. This is what he did. He won a championship. He did this, did that, and they're rewarding him. His next tra- contract is going to be off of what he does starting today moving forward. Mm-hmm. That's how the contracts work, right? It's not, I paid you 200 What you going to do? Yeah. yeah. Motherfucker, I ain't gonna do nothing. You already paid me, to be honest. Right, right, right. I don't have to do it. I don't have to do that. If I go out there right. and score zero, 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 zero at the money. For the next four years, the next three years, when I go to negotiate, that's gonna that's gonna <laughs> tell you, well, you made you did zero one year deal, goddammit. it. That, that, that many. Yeah. So what's the next step that AD, AD needs to take with his game? You got the, the richest contract now in terms of an extension. I think just, be, just I think be, I think just getting healthy. Yeah, just be, I think that's the next the next big three uh, big three years for him. It's just staying healthy, playing more games. Um, I think that's the biggest thing I want to see for him. Just being healthy. If I, it's it's angle right. Like why do I don't understand this? Why do big big players wear high, higher 
heeled shoes. I think a lot of them, like, I think they have the cushion, maybe. What, what do you mean? Like, like the you know, like most shoes. guards, our shoes are, our soles Flat. are f like flatter. Mm -hmm. Quick. Right? Taller guys, they have, they, you know, they're two and a half inches. Their shoes are like two and a half inches. So when they twist ankles, it's really going. Like our shoes are so low, we twist our ankle, there's nothing. But big guys, it's like they're always on platforms, trying to be a little bit taller. And wonder why when you come down, damn near you, you're gonna twist your ankle every single time. I, I think that, I, I feel like, I hope Anthony Davis is hearing what everybody's saying about him missing, you know, a lot of uh, games and get in the gym, not basketball gym, but the actual gym. Like he really needs to strengthen his entire body. Like you're playing 82 games already and then you're already not, he's not, he's like muscular, but not strong. Do you know what I mean? What? So you think Anthony Davis for the Lakers ain't in the gym every day? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think so. Lifting every, weights? All of them guys are in the gym. Lifting weights? Every day. I don't believe it. I got to see it. I refuse to believe that that man, I think I could probably- You think he in the gym every day? Every day. <laughs> I could probably deadlift just as much as him. And I'm a girl. Cat, you're like, a girl. He looks, he looks weak. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. He looks wait, 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 flimsy. Wait, dad, look. He looks like a noodle when he plays. Some people's bodies are like that. Like KD right. doesn't look strong. He's not strong. <laughs> but he lifts every day. No, he doesn't. He does not. I, I, I know what, what lifting weights every day looks like. I do it. For someone that's seven foot, you know what that looks like? Yeah, but it, I'm saying when you play, I know what it looks like. When you get hit, when you fall, when you get injured, you recover faster when you're in shape. When you're not, this is what happens. So you, you really think these... These guys, these high-level guys are not in the gym I think that they're day. probably pulling 10-pound dumbbells, curls, stupid shit nah, that's not nah. info, like, important nah, to your nah. body. No, 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 they're not doing that. They're not doing that. They're not doing that. They're not doing that. No, they're not doing that. What kind of strength training are you doing if you can't fall and get up and keep playing? Like, what, what, what's happening? Somebody just don't gain weight. Like, um, I'm not talking about weight. I'm talking like, about strength. Um, what is his name? Um, JaVale McGee mm -hmm. was in the weight room more than anybody trying to, trying to gain weight and get his body strong. He's just little. I'm not talking about weight. Strength isn't about weight. Strength? It's not. Like flexibility, all that. You, yeah. that's, that's what the model for the Lakers are. But like, how big are you trying, like, like how big do you think KD should be? They're not the white house. Like, I'm not talking about size. Like, I'm power. not talking about size. I'm just talking about strength. Yeah, I like, think KD's strong. Hmm. Like basketball I mean, strong but, and looking strong as to like I was wiry strong. Yeah. I was skinny, but I'm running through everybody. That's a different type of how, mu how much weights were you lifting back in your day? And how much do you think they do let now? Me, let me hear how much day. weights you were lifting. What is three plates on each side? 315. I can lift I like I was pound for pound one of the strongest on the team. Okay. But I was skinny. You didn't look weak, though, at all. You don't have to I didn't have no definition yeah, in my muscle until so I took my shirt played, off. When you played <laughs> basketball... I took my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, when you played basketball, <laughs> you didn't fall over and was out for two or three months. That wasn't happening to you. So I, I feel like I, I would believe you were lifting weights. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm, we're, we're, I'm guard, so I don't have that... <laughs> Far to fall. And to his and to Anthony Davis's like point though, he did, didn't he have like a growth a, a growth? Uh, yeah, he was a little dirty. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah that like so spurt. it's like his. How many? How many times? Uh, but he looks like give that. Give him that he, excuse. How long ago was I'm, that? Like man, that's you done I, grew into the shoes now. Like stop playing. <laughs> like my, son, my, son, my son, right? <laughs> six six and a half. He can't do a push up. Mm -hmm. Like he's gonna struck like the, the young one. He can do thirty in a row. So you're saying yeah. body type? It's just body type. Like yeah. body. Well, if I was, if I were a player that was constantly getting harassed about not getting up, I would try to do something different then, because whatever he's doing, it ain't working. We got championship. He got championship. He just how much you get? <laughs> One hundred eighty-six million. One hundred eighty-six million. Whoa, whoa! Well, it's do, it's working. <laughs> whatever said. he's doing is working. It, think about it. Think about it. You're the owner, and you have to pay this guy. If this guy wasn't. What we think he is, you, know, you don't lift weights. You don't. That would reflect his contract. No, it wouldn't. Yeah, it would. No, you yes. just said he got a championship. But what I'm saying is, it reflected. If I know this guy's not a worker, right? If I know he doesn't work hard, he's lazy. Well, I am not giving like him. Front I'm not giving front owners know what real hoopers like what it is. They just, see, oh no, they know what's I going pay on. The whole I pay a okay. hundred people. I see a, 
I pay a hundred people to let me know what type of what, what type of work ethic he had. So sometimes yeah, when we look fact. at contracts and you're like, well, he didn't get what he was supposed to, because there's other things that factor besides these numbers. Maybe he parties too much. Maybe he he drank. So you're basically saying his body type is just, just his body paper type. mache, like I said. Yeah. Fine. So last three seasons, uh, <laughs> 2020, 2021, 80 played 36 games. 2021, 2022, 40 games. This past season, 54 out of the 82. Does that concern you at all? And drop I'm a big bag. I didn't drop 186 million on it, so it don't concern me at all. Mm. But you a Lakers fan, exactly. Gil. But it don't concern me at all. But it you, costs me nothing. Be a but fan. you a Lakers fan. Be a fan I'm a for fan. a second. As a fan, does that concern you at all? And he said, he I think going into last season, he wanted to try and play all 82 games. No, he's what, pay, no. What does he's he need for, to be at? What does he, he need to be at? Like his his body type, he just can't. It's there's just some people body types they just can't do it. They just they're just physically not. Yeah. Too tall, fall, big feet, little. Oh, who knows? Yeah. It's just yeah. Which one? He did it in New Orleans. Yeah, it was young. It was twenty-two. Oh, these, y'all got a lot of excuses. He's only thirty now. Jesus Christ! Only thirty. It's now. only gonna get only worse. 30, then. Right. Thirty in this NBA. Then it's gonna get worse. All right, let, let's put him on HGH, Jen. Let's let's get big then. Hey, yeah, let's you know, not, I think he's gonna be complaining. Now oh, we, the motherfucker jumping over the rim now. now <laughs> what are you taking? That's the solution. <laughs> I like that solution. <laughs> Get him on the cream and the clear. Get him on that hey, cream and the like clear. I like that solution. Man, let, hey man stop, t- stop talking down on our Lakers. Yeah, man. You know what? If we I'm win a championship, if we, we win a championship in 80, doing what he doing, we win a championship, don't come to the parade. I- we don't want up. you at the parade. I'm not talking about it. <laughs> we don't want you at the parade. Be, you, be, you're, you're, Paper mache don't want people, you at the parade. Of all the people that talk <laughs> down on motherfuckers, I'm not talking down. I'm speaking the truth just like you do all the Not in our Lakers. Oh, God. I think he's going to have a good year. Yeah, have you ever heard him say anything bad about his bucks? Never. Mm-hmm. You and, just talk shit about Austin Reeves. You call him I, an F. No, I said he's, that, that team is an F. He's on it. As a group, is it that? on it. So we got some the Bs. Group project. We got two the group Bs. Project is we got F. two Bs on project. that team, and they got to be put in the F group. He's moving, right? moving the goal. You got to now listen. You got to one hundred percent on your test. Fail, fail, fail. God damn it, you got to fail as a group. Fine. We actually That's got, how we got, it works. We got a weightlifting expert in the building with us. It's Rashad McCann's day off, but he pulled up on us anyway. Oh, <laughs> they got you like that. <laughs> He it's Rashad that he's here, though. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Weightlifting expert. <laughs> he knew that 315, you said three plates. He answered that within two seconds. <laughs> I was in my head calculating, like, oh, 45, 45, Oh, yeah, because, 45. you know, remember I said I, I can lift three plates and then, And I you know, said I didn't yeah. Cap. Yeah. All right, there you go. But, but I'm not even going to just, like, you, I don't, you listen, y'all on these machine weights, watch out. Rashad, do you think AD needs to lift more? Absolutely. Thank you. That, that band workout shit don't work. No. But to Gilbert's point, you know, he's a different, he's a guard, it's a, it's a longer fall, all of that shit. But if you can play long minutes, long games in New Orleans, it can translate to, to the Lakers. Ain't no difference. You just got to want it. That bubble shit don't count. Stop counting that fucking championship. Championship. Look. Y'all cut his mic off now. Yeah. Championship. Oh. Cut his mic. <laughs> Hardest chip in NBA history. Count, count that shit. Not debatable. Mm-hmm. Hard, so winning the hardest chip in NBA history doesn't count? That's bubble? Crazy, that's crazy as hell, right? No, that that's, bubble count. That shit count. How long ago was that? Three years. Mm-hmm. And it counts. Mm-hmm. Everybody in the heart of the pandemic, situation. risky life and limb. I know, for real. To do the thing you the love. Hardest thing to do. It's almost you know, like there, it's almost like he still in, got COVID or something. Sitting like, there in the still, same city. Do you still got COVID? So you got long COVID. He's, 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 he's in the protocol. He's in the protocol every three days, ain't he? Like, what you <laughs> bro, <is> that, <laughs> What you doing? <laughs> so let's talk about Brian a little bit. Brian and AD, uh, their contracts were matched up. I think Brian has a player option the following season. What does this mean for Bron's future with the Lakers? You think he, he extends beyond, I think, what is it, 20, 24, 25? Sure. Was he 39? He'll be 39 December, if I'm not Yeah. December 31st? Yeah, he's going to extend. Yeah. He'll take less to get some Shit. Oh, yeah. oh. Stop with that taking. We I'm ain't taking saying, less for I, nobody. It was just a question. It was I mean, just Kobe a question. didn't take less for nobody. Of course he didn't. Well, yeah, no. I think he stayed. I mean, Why am I taking less? For, man, <clears throat> where else he going to go? At this yeah, point, that's, it's too much business out here in L.A. cracking. House, kids, we good. Yeah. You son, USC, son at USC, I'm going to say, yeah. We good. Stand on it. He going to chill? Yep. Yeah. I hope so. 
<laughs> and with this now extension, this means the AD is now the Lakers' successor. Is the expectation if LeBron does does chunk them deuces in the near future, AD is going to lead this franchise in the post-LeBron era? I don't think AD got nothing to prove. He don't got nothing to prove. He ain't got nothing to prove. AD ain't got nothing to prove. I'm paid. I'm done. I did what I was supposed to do. All right. But he's still playing now, right? So no, for sure. I'm a player. Saying, like, no, I'm have... playing. But I'm just like, you know. How old is AD? If I can. 30. 30. By 33, it might be done. Yeah, damn. You know, you know what's funny? Like, LeBron James put so much pressure on people. The light is different. It just puts so much pressure on people. The fact that he's 39 doing what he's doing makes 30 seem like you're a rookie. Mm. Mm. Like, what we, we, now we have a glimpse of what 38 and 39 is capable of doing, which means when players are, like, like looking like they're slowing down at 31, 32, I don't know how we accept that anymore. We're we got a guy that's, you know... You say average, body types? Like, 30, 20, 30, 30, 30, 38, 38 years old, averaging 27? Everybody's body Steph, 35, KD, 34. And they still, that's what I'm saying. It just, there's a different... They still, they're still moving up. Because yeah, back in the day, 30 was like, damn, you old. Now 30 is like, shit, you're, you're, still, you're still not prime. Your, you're just hitting. So, you know, so... Because how old is Russ? 34. 34, yeah. It's about that. It's getting around that time. <laughs> Can't be here for 39. I mean, no, I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, but you're 39. He I, averaging what's what? I always see when I see LeBron, I said when he's done, that last year is going to be like 21. 21, 6, and 5, he's going to be like, yeah, I'm good. I don't know if he'll ever let it get yeah. that. I don't even think he's going to get that low. I yeah. think he's going to end it at 25. Yeah, I don't think so. I think he's going to end it at That's like 25. But even looking at Kobe, Kobe tore his Achilles at 35. Before that, was still playing some high-level hoops. Yeah. Brandon, you were just at Steph Curry camp. Steph, 35. How is Steph looking? Does he look like he's lost a step or he still got it? Still in shape. Still the best. Still shooting it from anywhere. It's, it's, that it's, shit is wild. It's, don't, just a, it's a machine now. Yeah. I think it's just a machine. Yeah. Impressive. I bet Steph. Straight from the golf course to the days. like, straight from the golf course to the to the gym. It's a, it's a <laughs> to the gym to the Paramore <laughs> concert, like yeah, Steph yeah, out there. Hey, hey, could you look? Could you get a? Could you hook me up? What, what? Golf, golf game with Steph. I got my first birdie. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Gil? Shut up, Gil. <laughs> Gil, why didn't you congratulate me on getting my first birdie? I congratulate I, you. Y'all just heard it for the first time. Congratulations. I put it in the group chat. Y'all gotta stop. You, I, I don't listen to y'all in the group chat. I got better shit to do in okay. my life than sit here post, in the group chat. So you post stuff in the group chat. Uh, we support damn. you. We, we posted everything. And, like now, look at you acting. It just funny. looks like y'all ain't got no friends. If y'all are sitting there with the okay. group chat all goddamn day, cool. I can't help it if you ain't got no friends. Cool. If the group cool. chat is your friend. Cool. <laughs> why you ain't cool. congratulate me in the group chat? <laughs> They said, well, I, they said I the group, group chat until I got shit to say. Okay, fine. The, the group chat is a full time job. The group job. chat until I got shit to yeah, say. Yeah, he's a dickhead. Like, that's fine. Why didn't you congratulate so, <laughs> so, so I'm not. Like, like I'm just sitting there. Group chat. Oh, shit, Miko, congratulations. <laughs> he said, I'll mute the group chat until I got yeah. some shit to say. Oh, <laughs> Do you don't support him? I go days without comment. I don't know what the fuck y'all be saying. But you don't, you don't read all the previous but to catch up to where we're at. I only, shit jump off. I only go in there. Shit jump off when I go in there, I start from right there. That's why half the time I'm lost. And that's why I be telling you to shut up because you come in there like, wait, what happened? We done had fucking a whole conversation. You, listen, need, you don't listen, even scroll up and like, catch up. It looks like how many people in the group chat? 15 lonely people, goddammit. 14, because I, I, don't, I don't pay attention. <laughs> yeah, we, we are devoted servants of Gil's Arena. It's supposed to be we talking about, like, the show shit. It, it became conversation. Stop acting like it has never <laughs> That's what happens in group chats, though. Yes. That's normal. That's how I know you don't have friends. <laughs> no, that's how you know I have friends. No, because I'm don't. not in the group no, chat talking you to you motherfuckers the whole you time. You don't have friends. You don't have friends. Everybody knows how the group chat goes. Ain't no. Friends. You know, every, hey, congratulations, Miko had her first birdie in six Thank months you. of golf. One month Thursday. It'll be okay. one month Thursday. Thank you. She had a, she had a birdie. <laughs> Made women proud. The chat is also offering. Their congratulations. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Chad. Appreciate y'all. As you know, some miserable people in there. Yes. Some <laughs> I like them, too. Some mean spirit. I like my haters. They, come, they follow me everywhere I go. Thank you very much. I love you guys. Mwah. And how do we know it was your birdie? Did you I, film it from yes, the beginning to I the end? Yes, I did. The whole thing. Yes, I did. And it's on my page. 
Go look at it. Okay, I heard Miko. Oh, I heard Miko. So the first shot, second shot, and third. There was only two, Gil. It was a par three. Oh, you was on the par three? Oh, yes. damn, you got it. Ooh, okay. Yes. Tiger. Hit that bitch about 18 inches from the hole and put it in for a birdie. And there's no there's no breakage, no cut, no, no nothing? No, no. You can it's, see it. I, I'm, I'm camera following. I had to use the buggy this time. I didn't. There was no carts on this course, so I had to walk my shit to every fucking hole. And I'm mm. filming myself walking So you, you it. filmed yourself hitting the ball? Yes. How? There's a thing called a phone, uh-huh. right? And you put it up, you prop it up, and you show yourself. So you propped it up. Propped it up. And then you hit it, grabbed hit the phone, it. walked all the way down there. Yes. And yes. then you propped it up again to hit it. Yes. Yes. So so that video should be about, what, three minutes? It's Long. one, it's a minute. No, I, I almost did like the whole nine holes. I just gave little clips in the last no, hole. No, 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 I'm talking about that birdie hole. Was it a full two minutes? No. How long was it? I don't know. 30 Maybe seconds? 30 seconds? About? Yeah, yeah, so that's impossible. How? <laughs> to set it up, hit play. Hit the ball, grab it, and then walk the par three in 30 seconds. So I can't. Well, that's a three minute walk. I chopped the video up because I. Of course you did! On of Instagram. course you chopped it up. <laughs> of course you chopped it up. That was the point of it. You chopped and screwed. Exactly. You of chopped and screwed. Did. So most likely what she did was miss, like we already seen what she did. She probably missed four or five times. Uh, uh, and then she videoed herself actually hitting the good one. Boom, hit it. And then she walked, hell oh, yeah, go on mop. This is my first time. And then she she used the best one. So she probably like reset the shit like 15 times until it got in. We already know that trick. We have a fade. We already know we that trick. We have a fade in October. Just show up and I'm gonna beat your ass this time. Show up. Wait, we have another contest? I to- I asked you for the, a fade back. You, when? you did you say when you beat me uh, the first time? Oh, who's that? Uh oh. I said, don't McCants me like like you like he did you, not give you your fade back, and you said you would. I said, give me two months. Oh, uh oh. Who that? Is there people, Gil? I, I, so I got something to tell you, Gil. Um, I took the uh, <laughs> I took the underdog credit card, you know, made some 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 investments. No, I'm just kidding. We got a special guest pulling up to Gil's arena. Thomas Bryant in the building. What's up? Hello. What's up, sir? How you doing? Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. going on, bro? Good to see you, man. Hey, nice you. how you doing? Nice how to meet you, Miko. Nice to meet you. Come on, pull up. <laughs> So we were just talking about Anthony Davis, that extension. So obviously, yeah. you, you play for the Lakers. Mm-hmm. What'd you think about the team giving him the richest annual extension with that three-year, $186 million deal? I thought it was something, man. You know, uh, just playing alongside AD, seeing him up close and personal, just seeing the, his, raw, his unnatural talent for the game of basketball, and then seeing his work ethic on and off the court, of just how you, you know, his body maintenance, how he's always trying to make sure to stay on top of it and everything. And then also just, he has a very high basketball IQ. I think he, I think he deserves it, man. Mm-hmm. And for what he had from his playoff run out, out there, I thought it was amazing. We were debating if he lifts or not. Thank you. Is he in there lifting? <laughs> is he what? Is he in there lifting weights? Yeah, he lifts weights. Time that and time. Is, that is, that is every day, right? Oh, that uh, did sound very confident. I don't say every day, but like, oh. you will see but, he's, but, but is he stronger than what he looks? Yes, he is. Okay. He's absolutely stronger than okay. what he looks, for okay. sure. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm about to say, I... The only reason they're saying that is because I question whether or not he actually lifts, because when he falls down, he doesn't get up for three months. Oh. So, <laughs> you started shit with this, this, this man, his former and teammate. I love yeah. Anthony. No, they gotta see, he gotta live here. here. LA girl, like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I just want him to be better. I need more gains out of him. I love the contract, obviously. I love any black man getting money, but I was just questioning, because I'm an athlete as well, and I know the kind of work I have to put in just to play sports for fun. Yeah, for sure. You know sure. what I'm saying? So I was just like, damn, I'm wondering if he's working out because I just didn't see it. But mm-hmm. if you say it and you in the gym with him, I respect it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Shut up, Gil. I mean, we proved the point. I'm not saying anything, you know? It's just like a golf game. Just not just like, just, 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 just golf. It's just golf. It's just golf, you know? It's, it's kind of like a golf game. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. So you were actually with the Lakers this season before uh, getting traded to the Nuggets. Filled in nicely when AD went down. I think we're putting up 16, 16 and 10. 16 mm-hmm. and 10. Your thing. So what was that like for you kind of stepping up to the plate and how you know more or less frustrating was it after that fact to see that role kind of diminished? I mean, for me, it was. I knew what it was from what it from from before I signed on it. You know, they wanted to have a big. 
to maybe play alongside AD, put AD as a four, me at the five, or be, be the backup to him. I didn't have a problem with that. I felt it. For me, in my eyes, going there to the Lakers, I'm like, all right, I'm backing up who I feel is a future Hall of Famer. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know, if, that has, if that's what it has to be, it has to be that way. So for me, just being alongside those guys, seeing their work ethic, and then seeing that everybody wants to win around there, I was just like, I've wrapped my head around just being more prepared and, you know, staying in the moment of what it is right then and there. You know, a lot of guys, you know, see guys in that caliber and just start to see the bright lights and everything. I'm just like, oh, my God, it's this, it's this guy. Like, <laughs> you know, play it, like, alongside LeBron James and being in that Lakers jersey around the organization. But for me, it was just like, all right, how can I stay prepared? All right, what do these guys need out of me in order for me to, you know, you know put some production out there on the floor? And I just kept working and working and working day in and day out. And then, luckily, the opportunity came. I mean, it sucks that AD had to go down for that opportunity to come, but I'm happy that I had the opportunity to play alongside these guys, especially LeBron James, you know? I grew up watching him, so it's just like being able to share the court instead of playing against them now, it's like, that's pretty cool. Is that the most frustrating part? Like, when, you're, when you are prepared and then you get that chance and you shine, and then when everybody gets back healthy... They try to pretend what you did for these last 10, 15 games and mean nothing. Yeah. And you go back to like the the minutes that you like, like, hold on, wait, wait, wait. I done proved that I'm worth playing. And you know, I don't know how you going I know you can't like give, you know, go AD, you know, 38 minutes to 32. Right. But you can find some minutes for me the fact that I'm averaging 16 yeah. and 10. Yeah. You know, I I also thought about I also thought that way, but it was just like, you know, it's a business. You know, they look at AD as that person right there. They want him to be at the forefront and everything. And, you know, when I had it, when I talked to Darvin, it was just like, you know. Was we he going honest? With, yeah, it was honest. Okay. Rob and, Rob and uh, Darvin were very honest with me. It was just like, look, we want AD at the five. AD's going to be playing these minutes. And, you know, for me, I, was just, I just had to take it to the chin. Just be like, you know, all right, that's fine. You know, I'm at four. Be, Fuck it. I don't give a where you put. Just put me somewhere. Four. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I just want to play. That man submitted. So you talk about pay, playing with LeBron. Obviously, we got to talk about the meme of the year. Uh, Brian on that record-breaking bucket. You was wide-ass open, <laughs> calling for the ball. You know what's crazy? We run, we run through that same play in practice, and whenever LeBron sees me on that wing, he always tells me to cut. And if you have a smaller defender... Post your ass up in the paint, bro. Uh -huh. yo, yo, get a big target. Get an easy point. It's easier to score two points than that three-pointer, a contested three. Mm -hmm. So whenever he got that, I was running down. But every time since it got to 12 points, I'm trying to look up like, uh -huh. all right, we got 10 points, eight, six. All right, oh, shoot, we got turnover. All right, get back on defense, run back. And then all I'm doing is just everything that they were telling me to do. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then when he shot it, I'm like, Wait, everybody camera. Oh, shoot, that was a shot. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was just like, it was kind of a nice. super surreal moment. But it was just like, at the same time, we were still trying to play to win the game and everything and play the right way. But it was just like, I didn't, I didn't really even recognize it till it, till it actually happened. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, shoot, they got me on a meme now. Are, are you are, <laughs> salty at all that he didn't pass you that rock because it would have been a better shot? <laughs> nah. So I, was, I, I, I don't give a fuck if you broke the record, bro. Give me the rock. Because nah. <laughs> if thing. he would have missed it, I knew it was close. I didn't know it was two points, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I for sure would have passed it out. I was like, bro, this ain't my time. <laughs> like, we yeah, came here to like, see him. So funny. People don't realize sometimes that that person's in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone else isn't. Right? Unless we at home. That's just unless you're on the bench. I mean, like the players that's on the court, you don't really, you're not counting how many points he needs. The bench obviously knows, and the person himself knows, but for the, for the most part, like when you look down, like I think Russ took some shots, somebody else took some shots, they're not really, you know, they're just, it's just playing. You're just, yeah. Yeah. you're just, unless he comes out and say, yo, I, I need two, two more points, y'all. Then they'd be like, all right, all right. And then everybody do. Other than that, for the most part, Usually, when you're in the real time, you don't really understand what's going on. You're just doing what you do best. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly what I was doing, just doing what I felt was best at that point, what they told me to do, what I felt was an advantage right there. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, when it all came into play, I didn't even realize till after he made it, I was like, oh, shoot, that was a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so it was cool. It was cool to be a part of that, too, just to see that mm -hmm. and just to say, like, oh, shoot, like, we're somewhat a part of history. 
So let, let, let's move this thing forward. You won a chip with the Nuggets, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be an NBA champion? How did it feel to go back, <laughs> smack the Lakers in the minimum amount of games required to advance to the finals, come back, <laughs> do it on their court? That's minimum. What call it here. That's what we call the it. The minimum. <laughs> Some people call it other things. Don't call it. <laughs> Shut up. No, we don't call that, that here. Out of respect for Gil, Lakers fan. But, uh, just what was it like for you now to be an NBA champion to kind of see a dream you probably had as a kid come true? It's still kind of surreal to me. You know, I still can't really fathom it. And it's, it's, it's one thing that you always dream about, but it's like when you get into that opportunity, it's like, wow, you're really here with a team like that. You know, and, you know, uh, everyone on that Denver team was just so locked in, so together, and it was just, it was a, it was something special to see because we knew as soon as we got out of the first round, we felt like, all right, we got some confidence, all right? We beat, we beat a really good, you know, hostile team with them. But when we got to, when we got to Phoenix and we beat Phoenix, especially that last game on their home floor like that, our confidence was through the roof. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it wasn't, no celebration whatsoever. Everybody was just like, oh, yeah, we can do this. Yeah, we got one. We, we might have one. Yeah. We might have one. So everybody was so locked in into the Lakers right then and there. It was just like, yo. We didn't stand a chance. <laughs> but, but from, from your side, did the Lakers, were they even a threat to you guys? Keep it real. <laughs> I mean, they were a threat because, of course, you still have, like, you still can't bypass LeBron's greatness and AD's greatness. Mm -hmm. But for us, we all had the confidence to just like, okay, they got two superstars, but like, we got a real good team ahead of us. Mm -hmm. uh, like, we got a real great team. We all play together. We got key pieces that, you know, really play well together. And then Jamal's playing great. Jokic is playing outstanding. It's like, okay, we got a good vibe going. So I think everybody was feeling it, but nobody really, really was, like, really scared of, like, us getting beat, mm -hmm. to be honest. Like, right, okay. nobody really <laughs> felt like we were going to get beat. Like, of course, they might steal a game or two or anything. They felt like we were... Like, they, we feel like they were going to get a game or two, but, like, losing the series, we didn't feel like we were going to lose. Damn. Then they didn't even get, not a game. I didn't either. I didn't feel like you guys were going to lose the series either, <laughs> <laughs> even as a fan. But shut, shut up. up. I'm they just saying. Look at him jump. Yeah, that, that's, that, that, he's, a, he's a delusion. <laughs> debatable. He's a delusion. He said debatable. You can't accept reality and understand when somebody's just better than you. Like, I, he's mad. Like, I'm a Laker fan, but I'm not stupid. Like, I'm not going to just go into it like, oh, yeah, we're about to beat the Nuggets, knowing damn well this roster they have. Like, come on. Just like, you know? the, like he was delusional. <laughs> he was delusional thinking that the, the Heat was gonna beat y'all too. <laughs> well, he was delusional. He said they, they was gonna beat y'all, and we laughed at that too. But you know that's delusion. You know what I mean? Like you have to keep it real. So. <laughs> we got a game though, right? We didn't oh, get shit. swept. No, I'm, I, 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 a game. I, I think we need to. I, I question Joe Laker um, loyalty. Oh, he finna kick. <laughs> I think we got to question her Laker loyalty. Mm. Why? Because as long as I'm honest. So that means you sat on this couch knowing that we wasn't going to win. You wasn't even delusional with us. No, I wasn't. I wasn't delusional that, with that's, you. That's, that's why I kept quiet. I didn't quit. I didn't. I, I don't care who I we didn't face. Come I'm, at delusional. You. <laughs> I'm delusional. I'm delusional every game. I don't care. Playing, that's yeah. Lakers fandom in a nutshell. Oh, they got five playing. to me. Yeah, we yeah. playing. Yeah. Nah, we playing. winning. <laughs> but me as a fan, like I can look at the game and, the and tell which team is better on paper, and then you can take it off paper and say who has more heart and all that kind of stuff, and you come to a a real nigga decision in your head and say, they're better than us. When Craig fought Debo, did he say, damn, Debo better not? I'm going to grab this fucking brick. <laughs> I'm going to grab this brick and I'm going to hit Debo's ass. One on one, yes. <laughs> but I'm getting this brick. Oh, my God. But let's talk a little bit about, so you won the chip with the Nuggets. And I talked to you before, right after you won the championship. Mm -hmm. You were uncertain what you were going to do for agency. Two-year deal with the Heat. Go over there. So why was that, do you feel like, the best option for you to go over to the Miami Heat? Uh, for me, I thought the best option was just the Heat because of, you know, the personality of what they do. I prided myself on being the most conditioned big man when I'm out there. Mm. They pride in themselves on, on having yes. great shaped people in their organization. Top from people that know how to play the game of basketball, want to work day in and day out. That's all I'm about. I'm always working. Before I even came here, I made sure I got my two-hour, you know, conditioning in, weightlifting in. And I didn't stop until I got every rep right until I wanted to, mm. you know, until I felt like it was good enough. 
you know, I don't stop until I feel like it was good enough. I'm going right back after I get done with this. So it's like, mm. the grind doesn't stop, but it's like, they carry themselves on, you know, their heat culture of just, you know, taking things, like having, holding yourself accountable, you know, taking responsibility for your actions, you know, on and off the court, being yourself in the top shape of your life. A lot of guys are not in great shape. Mm -hmm. You know, some guys just have pure talent, but a lot of guys aren't in real, real, real game shape. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, can you run up and down this court 10 times in a row as fast as you can without stopping? Yeah. Like, that's a real question you have to ask yourself, and that's why I prided myself on a lot. And then just being around the team, you know, a great organization, Eric Spolstra, a great coach, Pat Riley, a great GM, owner and everything. So it's like, you know, they all came to me, and they wanted me and everything, so I felt like it was a great decision. Okay. And don't forget, there's also a great like, opportunity going right for back you into here the fire. as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know what right I mean? Back like, into the fire. That, that, number two, that could be a number one. You know what I mean? Like, there's mm -hmm. opportunity for you if anything, if, God forbid, anything happens with their starting big man or you taking his job, anything. You know what I'm saying? That's a great opportunity there for you. And I hope you know. No, it is. It's a great opportunity. Were you letting him know it all during the finals? Like, look. I got the answer for y'all. I'm just saying, like, you know what I mean? I see where y'all need, what y'all need. I can <laughs> definitely help fill that void. But have you been out there at all to work out and condition, doing any type of stuff, talk to Coach Poe? Like, I've been out there one time, talked to the players, you know, get acquainted with the area and everything. The humidity there is crazy. Ooh, I'm still trying to get used to that. Man, it's, it's hot out there, but. You know, I've, I'll be out there more towards the end of the month, really getting it in with the coaches in the gym nonstop, day in and day out, trying to get acquainted with the guys, you know, deal with the time change and everything. As of right now, it's just still training right now. Sure. And what, what did you, you know about that? September 1st? Yeah. yeah. Where do you mm -hmm. live now? I still live out here in LA. You know, smart man. <laughs> everybody, but yeah, you already know. Everybody come out here for the summertime. You can't yeah, be LA. Yeah, yeah. You can't be that LA. LA hoop summer. Too, and I live in. Well, I mean, looking for you, it'll, it'll be y'all winter during. But no, it'll be y'all summer. It's some, we have summer in December. Yeah, summer in December. Yeah. <laughs> that's when it gets hot. That's when your weather. That's when it's about. Yeah. That's when it's about seventy-five to eighty-two. That's the summer. Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. That's not bad. That's, that's not our bad. summer. Yeah. <laughs> So you got to see Jimmy Butler on the other side. What impressed you most about his game, and, and what are you excited about being able to play with him and the rest of that squad? He was a pure dog. Like, he just, he holds himself accountable. He has the most confidence in himself and his teammates. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. No, no, no. <laughs> Confident coffee. Confidence coffee. Confidence nah, coffee. he does. You, got, you can't bypass what he's done throughout that whole playoff run. For them being in a play in a playing game, mm -hmm. winning both playing games to get to the NBA Finals. Well, they lost one. Oh, yeah, they did lose one. They only got there because Giannis was hurt. Look, that's a big Giannis don't get hurt game three, game five. He came back, didn't he? Yeah, I mean. You know. He was a shell of himself when he came back, but they, they won. Can't take nothing from him. They won. Excuses, excuses. If Giannis, you say don't, Jimmy got Giannis that don't go down. Is that beast or that dog? Well, first of all, the, the conversation was who had more confidence, Jimmy or Jokic? Jokic. That was the original uh, conversation. Who had more confidence, mm. Jimmy or Jokic? Oh, yeah. Who had the most confidence? They both had the playoffs. straight. See, they got, both had straight confidence out there. Like you saw no glimpse of like Jimmy bowing his head or like looking scared or anything. He was just like, "All right, cool." But Yoke was just straight killed. It was a straight kill. Just everything was just straight. He didn't want to react to literally anything until the game was over. So they were both like so even killed throughout the whole time. Mm -hmm. Even when we were on the road and we won game three, uh, yeah, we won game three, mm -hmm. Yoke and everybody else was still like so even killed. Mm -hmm. Cause they were just like, bro, we can't, they already stole one from us, dog. Like if we come into their house, see what they did to Celtics, dog. like they won, nigga. these motherfuckers can play, bro. Stop taking these niggas for granted, bro. Like don't take these niggas for granted. <laughs> I mean, we see uh, Joker and his demeanor kind of on the court, obviously super laid back. Looked like he was more excited about winning the horse race back in Serbia <laughs> than winning the chip. But does he, ever, does he turn up every yell at you guys? I mean, is there ever where he gets emotional and spirited? <laughs> it was one time throughout the playoff where he actually showed emotion. And we were all like, oh, shoot, okay, yo, you win this, all right? Because <laughs> <laughs> I think we ran a play wrong and turned the ball over like two or three times in a row. He was just like... I don't fucking care about scoring. Just play the right fucking way. I we were, that was in a timeout, wasn't it? Yeah, it was in yeah, a timeout. We were all just it. like, oh, yeah. okay, all right, it's too locked in now. <laughs> also, the play was trying to go to him, and they just kept turning the ball over? 
Something like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, he's a team. Yeah, player. but he said he didn't care about scoring. Yeah, yeah just, like, just run the play. Just run the play. Yeah. 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 Play. Crazy thing is he doesn't care about scoring. Yeah, you can Dude is so passive. Like, he wants to get people open. He wants to pass the ball. That's so hard. That's so it's dope. like, it's easy as hell to play with him. Yeah. Because he's just naturally get Like, he has a God-given talent for the game of basketball. Mm -hmm. But when you put him in a situation to where he, like, what he relishes at doing, it's a, it's a, rep, it's a recipe for disaster for the other team. <laughs> so what are things from this year's experience playing with Joker that you'll be able to now take from your game and apply throughout the rest of your career? You know, I... I I respect his work ethic. You know, just seeing everything that he does to a T, day in and day out, even in a little, you know, a little measly warm-ups that you do before the before the practice or games or anything like that. You know, the bears and all that. You, you know, you go through like two or three of them, then you're like, all right, man, I'm I'm cool. Like I don't need no more of this. Now nah, you're going through the whole thing, from start to finish. Mm -hmm. He gonna be there right on time. He gonna end on time. He gonna do everything. Everything. Cut corners. Everything. Doesn't cut corner. Doesn't cut a corner at all. You would think he was he was a young rookie trying to make his way mm. into the league, but he still holds that same accountability day in and day out. I respect the hell out of it. That's who AD should be working out with then. Real. And not giving them. That's that's <laughs> like Rocky versus uh, AD Apollo Creed in this situation. I'm just saying he's not giving him, he not giving him the secrets, man. What? <laughs> Shots fired, man. Never fan, y'all. No, because you don't fuck with AD. AD, we on that grind, AD. If you can hear me, AD, man, you got to give Jokic yeah, all 75. Show me. Show me. <laughs> 75. Give him 75. Up. I don't care how you do it. I will break you. Ron, stand, stand down. You don't stand, stand down. Breeze, stand down. You know what I mean? Stand down. I don't give we don't, we don't got to win nothing, right? It can be 75 to 130 as long as AD got 75. I, we hey, good. As long yeah. as he plays we good. in 65 games. We, we're doing 65. Okay, we'll see. So you were McDonald's All-American, uh, projected top five pick in college, slipped to the second round in the draft after you came back for your sophomore year. How much did being a second round pick motivate you to prove all the doubters wrong? It motivated me a lot. You know, from what people said, from me being a first round pick and everything like that, and them saying, like, I should have left my first year. I knew for a fact for myself, I wasn't mature enough after my first year. Like. I was going into the league of just like, this is going to be my job now. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready for that. I was so young, still naive about life and everything. And, you know, just going to college and everything, just learning and everything like that. Just learning about the game of basketball from Coach Crean and everything. And the importance of film work, the, day, the days that you have to put in, day in and day out of the work that you want. Like, you want to be there. All right, now you got to work hard. This, is, this isn't easy, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I learned that my first year in college. I just knew after that first year, like, this was a little bit too good to be true. <laughs> like, this shit isn't supposed to be feeling like this. Like, yeah, we won the Big Ten title and all that. Yeah, we won this and that. But I just knew for myself, I wasn't mature enough. Mm -hmm. Like, if I would have left after that first year, I would have been out of the league way before now. Damn. And I just knew that. Mm -hmm. But you was outside. <laughs> she was, nah, I wasn't she even was outside. outside. It, was just, it was just me, just me, just, I'm a realist. You know, I always keep it real with myself. Mm -hmm. It's always straight point forward. Like, if if I'm not accomplishing something, all right, let's figure out how to way to accomplish it. If I know I can do this, all right, let's do it. Mm -hmm. But it's just me also looking at myself in the mirror, just knowing, like, mm -hmm. yo, are you actually ready to move to take this step forward? I knew after my freshman year, I wasn't I wasn't ready yet. So you know, yeah, I was a second round pick, but it just motivated me to be like, all right, I'm mature enough to handle this. Most people I know aren't mature enough to be like. Oh, you're gonna be a first round pick? Oh, yeah, yeah. The next thing you know, you just see your name dwindling down, dwindling down, dwindling down. And then you finally get the call and you're like, all right, cool. Fuck it. I don't care if I'm not a first round pick. We're gonna work. Because I know a lot of y'all niggas is not better than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. And I take that with pride and I hold that to accountability to this day forth. D during that process of uh, <clears throat> the whole draft process, like how many workouts did you do? <sighs> I did like. Damn, man, 20, 21 of them. Damn. So how, many, how many other players did you get to go against? Not too many. A lot of yeah. them was ducking. Oh, we yeah, talked see? about that. Mm. And, and, and that's, that, that, that was always my issue with the draft process. Like, you're, you're judging me off of what I can do by myself. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know how hard I'm supposed to be going. I don't, like, give me the p people I'm supposed to be playing against and judging. So a lot of people are slipping to the second round because they don't have nobody. Like, I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm, not a, I'm not trying to be a professional exerciser. Mm -hmm. 
I, I don't I don't know what that means. Like, you know, I'm running around these cones and this is stupid, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> game speed. Like, okay, put me in a game and I can give you that. Mm -hmm. In in tryouts and workouts by myself, I don't know what game speed is. Just, exactly. What, I'm supposed to run as fast as possible and just <laughs> shoot? Like, what is that supposed to look like, right? Right. Like, and I think a lot, I think they're missing a lot of talent on how it's designed because you're judging people off who's great at working out by themselves. Absolutely. That's, that's what they're that's judging. Not, this is the, we're not playing this game by ourselves. Like, you want to see what I can do? Put the bodies in front of me. Exactly. I can show you what I can do. And he's supposed to be the number one scorer? Put him up. I, I, I got that. He's supposed to be the best defense? Let me show you what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Right? And they don't have, they don't have that. That motto. But do you think it's also because guys don't want to do that? Like the people that are already like, who wants to go? Like imagine you're in the league, right? And they call you in to come work out when he cook you. Like what happens to I mean, you? It happened before. Your, your, your you stock goes down. Saying? It's happened. Yeah, your stock goes down. I mean, but, I mean, your stock goes down. But is this about like being drafted as high as possible? Is this about? I'm talking about him. I'm talking the about the getting the players to come in and go That's at agents. people. Yeah. There's agents. Like you, you know, you're trying to stay away from certain. Certain player, like I, I would be, like to be honest. If my agent ever told me when I was coming in, yeah, we're gonna keep you out of this workout because of, like, wait, you think he better than me? <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, no, you think he better than me? What do you mean? Like, I would be offended. Throughout what the whole was? draft process, I'm, I'm asking my agent, who's gonna be at this workout? Huh? Who's gonna be here? Who's gonna be there? Who's gonna be here? Who's gonna be here? Oh yeah, he's gonna be there. All right, bet. I'm going at this nigga, bro. Like, I'm mm -hmm. going at them and everything, like, just to prove, like. And you know, agents going to do that because it's like, nah, we're not, yes. we're not gonna let you match up with him. We yeah. gonna make sure you stay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Like as a, as a general manager, like that's what I'm saying. As the, if you're a team and you're you're drafting players and you have this player and they hear they heard this player's coming in and this player duck, like that player don't get a red flag for you. That should be a show. Oh, he's scared of. Competition, mm -hmm. like, come on, like, like that lets me know oh, you don't want to compete. Like that should be flags. Like, I would be I would, if I'm a, if I'm a, 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 a owner and I'm I'm a think of players that oh yeah this person's gonna be in 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 a, in a workout with you if you don't mind, just so I can hear him say oh, I'm good. All right, cool. I knew you wasn't gonna compete. Mm -hmm. Like that that's, that gives me a reason to knock you off the list. Mm. I want to hear a player like I got the number two pick. Like yo, I'm gonna put this person and this person with you. Cool. I, I've been waiting for him. I don't even Let's want to see, see the work. I don't even want to see the workout now. Now I know you want want the smoke. You gonna be okay. This is the guy I want. I don't even have to see the workout now. Knowing I know mentally you are ready and prepared to just take on all challenges. Absolutely. So why, I mean, why do you feel like teams allow that? Right. Obviously, it's agent driven, right? If I want to protect my client, I'm not gonna put them in those situations. But to your point, now if I'm the team and I'm about to invest millions of dollars exactly into you, what I was talking about you're not, earlier. Like. Uh, this is the only, it's the only, it's the only job that I know that doesn't look for the apex. It's not designed for the apex. Like when you hear like Microsoft or any of them, and they say, hey, you know, um, I got a million dollars for who, anybody who can hack my system, right? That is a job offer. Mm -hmm. They want to <laughs> see, they want to see who's been working on their craft that they don't have. It's a job opportunity. So now all the best hackers in the world are coming to try to hack the system. To beat everybody else. The person who hacks their system obviously is getting the job, <laughs> right? So you have, you're gonna keep doing it every year just in case there's somebody out there that's developed a skill that you don't have and you're trying to put them into, but you use that tool of, you know, <clears throat> hack my system. All of that, that's just a job, that's just a job. Uh, opportunity that they're they're looking for. They're looking for the apex of their 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 craft. Same thing with the NBA. You need to put in a system that brings out the apex. Mm -hmm. Like like Jokic, you can't the the way the system is. You're not gonna find him because you have him uh, going one on one. Like have y'all ever seen the videos of Luca working out? Yeah. Trash, right? <laughs> like you put him through these drills, he don't know what the hell. They had him and Steph, and they were showing. Yeah, it was. Like he over here, like the, the red and blue. He's like, oh, uh, uh, uh. right. So if you had to drive him off of this, you'd be like, he doesn't know what he hit the ball and hitting the wall. He don't know what that is because his body's not designed to do yeah. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? He knows how to play basketball. Yeah. This stuff is basketball. Learning body, body. That these guys are programming. Okay. Every three seconds is gonna count. Like you have, you have that guy who's a test taker. Yeah. Like yeah. doctors. Mm -hmm. 
Like Dr. Uh, like we keep yeah. Dr. Don't even get All right, no, no, no. Don't even do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we got beef. Tony but not just like, I, it was just something that, you know, a person who, you know, puts doctor in front of their name. We don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't do it. Don't just, do it. It just, it just seems You're not gonna go right? kill. Stay on. Stay focused. Yeah, we've been packed we up by enough people. We, we have enough people. we got enough people looking you know, for it. people too, like that. Huh? We have a guest. Yeah, like, we have so, a guest. You're outside of your job and you still Gil. use doctor to, Gil, to we have, Gil. It's a little corny to me. Yeah, we have a guest. We have a guest. Let's stay Gil, focused. No, no, no. NBA Gilbert. My name is not Gil. It's NBA Gilbert Arena. It's NBA Gilbert Arena. You better use it. I can't stand it. Oh my God! Come back up, correct, huh? He annoys, he annoys me so much. So let, let's move beyond the draft process and just talk about making that transition to the NBA. Who were the guys uh, that showed you what it means to be a pro? Really, I was young. I was with a bunch of young guys, but my two vets that really showed me were like Corey Brewer, Luau Day, and then just growing, you know, with you know, growing with guys like Julius Randle, Larry Nance, and then me, Kuz. Lonzo and Jay Hart coming into the play and everything. So we all just learning the ropes right then and there. And we all a bunch of young guys, so it's like we all trying to, f like, figure it out each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, you got a few vets there, here and there, from coaches all the way down to players. For me, it was just like Corey Brewer and Lou Alday because my lockers were next to them. So I was always talking to them and everything. I'm on the sidelines. I'm talking to them, seeing what they, how they feel about the game. What do you guys see? They ask me, what do I see? And it was just... <laughs> It just helped my, my IQ just get bigger and, you know, more faster picking things up out there. So was, I, I, I put a lot of applause to, you know, having those two guys with me. I have a question for you. What do you think the NBA can do to actually speed up that process of you learning and everything? Like you said, you had those two vets, but there was really a bunch of young guys. What, what can they do with guys coming in now that you feel like could really help speed up the process of learning the game? I mean, for me... I'm not giving no leeway to the guys coming in now because none of these your, none of these rookies got to do any type of rookie trade like rookie <laughs> duty is nothing, man. And then like for a lot of guys, it was just like you had to go through the trials and tribulations to actually mm -hmm. learn through stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the guys that I know and guys that are coming up now, they don't listen. Mm -hmm. You know, hard headed. You know, experience is their best teacher. Mm -hmm. I was the same way when I was younger. Experience was my best teacher. I was hard headed. You know, I had to learn the hard way. But for me, it's just like, I feel like you have to go through those trials and tribulations mm -hmm. as a young guy and then going into the league. It's not, That's like, not it's a grown do. man's league. Mm -hmm. NBA also stands for National Basketball Association, but no boys allowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you gotta be a grown man about this they stuff. They you millions. Man. Yeah, they paying you a million dollars. Right? You, you're changing the aspect of your <clears throat> family's life, of your life, yeah. and your family's life if, if you're blessed enough to do that. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, you got to take that with accountability. Like, think about that, bro. Nobody has to give you a million dollars. Like, think of a GM just saying, like, here, I'm just give you a million dollars. Mm -hmm. What, just like that? Nah, bro, you got to work for this. You got to show that you're worth for this, bro. Mm -hmm. You got to show you're worth that. So it's like you have to, you have to go through those trials and tribulations. I, I like it because, it, you know, it toughens you up. You learn, you learn to be a man in this game. And it helps you with the aspect of just playing basketball and life in general. Right? There's no handouts. <laughs> so if you take the two groups, right, the group you came in with and these veteran groups, can you now see how some people's careers yes. don't become what they're supposed yes, to be? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I see it day in and day out. Just from their work ethic, how they treat people, how they hold themselves. Mm. They don't hold themselves accountable. Mm -hmm. They try and cut corners day in and day out, like, it's just like, that's just not how the game works. You ain't gonna get blessed. You want the game to bless you, you gotta put the work in, bro. So do you think that, do you think your, your, your career changes because LeBron James came and you got to see a whole nother aspect of how things are done? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I feel like when, when you're on a team with a superstar caliber player like that or with a great vet that's a superstar caliber player, it changes your dynamic of how you see things. I mean, you know, seeing you guys from before, watching you guys, I'm like, damn, those dudes really, like, they really put the work in. So it's like, it's a whole aspect of difference, you know, going from one organization to another, seeing how you see, like, a LeBron James, how he holds himself accountable, how he does his work day in and day out, and it doesn't change. 
All right, you're like, all right, bet, I'm going to take that. All right, let's see if I can get better at this, better at that. Oh, yeah. All right, he really not taking no days off. Bro, he really stand by that. All right, bet. All right, shoot, if he working, I'm working, man. I can work twice as hard as that. Let's go. Let's keep going. And that was just the thing of just getting better. And, you didn't, and then you see improvements on it. It's like, it's almost like a drug. It's mm-hmm. like, damn, I can't stop now. I just accomplished this. I didn't accomplish that like a month ago or anything like that. Why would I stop now? So it's just like a automatically of like a of a slow grind, like you know how T says. Yeah, right there on the shirt. Yeah, slow grind. Know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We just yeah. Seattle this weekend too. So we always talk about welcome to the league moment. So it's a two part question. What was your welcome to the league moment? But then what was the moment where you knew I'm league? My welcome to the league moment, I got dunked on with the left hand by Mba Mute. He crazy left hand dunked me wait, on a fast wait, break. Wait, Luke Bamute? Luke Rashad Bamute? And went to, went to UCLA? Yeah, I you did. Jumped? I did. Cameroon? He said I did. I did, I did jump. Ooh. I did jump. And then there was another one where it was, uh, it was the, we were playing OKC. And it was the first play of me having Steven Adams. They said, we ain't giving you no help. I said, all right, cool, I got it. Got this? This man dunked me right in my chest and flew me back and dunked the ball. I was like, oh shit, I, I gotta get stronger now. <laughs> <laughs> but then my time where I knew like I was, I was like, okay, I got something now was well, um, it was after the game where I've scored, I think it was like 12 for 12 or something like that from the field. I think we're 14 for 14 from yeah, the field. Yeah, it was that one. <laughs> and then, oh, we got uh, it. Yeah, we got it. Then I had another game where I had like, I was scoring like double doubles like throughout the bat, but then like, the one that got me this year was when we played Denver and then we won that game, but then I kept going throughout the whole time. And then another one with Atlanta, when we won the game in Atlanta and I had like 17 rebounds or something like that in there. And I was like, yeah, I still got this motherfucker. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I remember the moments. I remember, you remember Boom Shay Boom Shay? That, I said it was so Portland. It was like it was a yeah. dude named Boom Shay Boom Shay. Ruben Boom Shay Boom Shay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. So I'm on a bench talking shit. Like we get our ass whooped. So I'm like, oh yeah, he about to put me in. And dudes in, I'm dunking on dude. Right. Yeah. For sure. I was like, yeah, I'm dunking on dude. I'm gonna just take off on him. Right. He be under there and he like he's little, like like skinny little. So I like I push through him. And it's oh, hard kid when you get in there. So on a fast break. Like, stole the ball. Because it was like Steve Kerr and all of them. So they were slow. So they're trying to pick up full court. So I, boom, right side, boom. And jump, boop. And he just stood there just. <laughs> bah, fell on my back and everything, man. That was the most embarrassing thing. Like, oh, man, I ain't ready for this sleep. He threw your shit? <laughs> what? It, like, he just, like, it was like, it felt like I was just floating, though. Like, yeah. And he just, <laughs> he just like, he was just sitting there just, come on. Uh, and just jump straight up, just 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 pulled it with me. Pinch Boom. It. Like, oh wow. Ah. Yeah, I ain't doing that no more, man. I'm just do pull up jump shots. <laughs> <laughs> pull up jump shots from now on. This is embarrassing. So let's just talk about big men in general. It seems like the league has kind of devalued the traditional center of what we used to think about that position 15, 20 years ago. But in your opinion, who's the most underrated big man in the NBA right now? <sighs> most underrated big man in the NBA? Oh. Mm. I mean, excluding myself, I would say like that's that's a hard pick because a lot of the bigs now can shoot. Yeah, that's what they want now. They want bigs that are able to shoot. You know, block shots and defend, but you got to be able to shoot. But I think a lot of you know a lot of the guys that I've been around have gotten really good in recognition and everything. I went, who do you think? Who do you think? Shit. That's why I just asked the questions. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, man. Yeah. I just asked the questions. I just asked the questions. I'm a casual as the young kids say. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, I mean, you, you just look around. It just seems like, and we wanted to hit on that too, kind of just the center position and what it means to be a center. Like somebody like yourself, you got to guard all three levels. Yeah. You got to be able to score at all three levels. Do you think it's fair, do you think it's fair the NBA took out the, the for the All Star game, the position, the position, the center position. Oh yeah. Do you think that's that that was? I don't think that's fair. Okay. But it's like, I mean, what are you gonna do? It's the NBA. They want to make money. Yeah. <laughs> Complain. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I just don't like it because it, history, right? It, it seems like it just 
it just scratched out the rest of history. I mean, it did. Yeah. <laughs> it did. Yeah. Like, this modern day age is all about guards. You know, big men aren't the vocal point of a, you know, of a team anymore. But you have to figure it out by the way of, like, if you're able to shoot, can you handle, can you defend, can you do something? What can you, what can you bring to contribute to this team and to any other team to where you don't become irrelevant, I would say. Mm-hmm. Hey man, it's just like it. it, it I just don't like because it, it, it seems like it just pro- it, it protects a generation of sinners. <laughs> it just protects a generation of sinners that the next generation moving forward can't surpass because they won't have the accolades. Like so, now you got some of these these sinners, like even sinners <clears throat> from the past. I got five all stars. Well, it, five all stars for any sinner today is going to be fucking hard because now he's going against. Power forwards that are favorites. Yeah. Right? So it's like, you know, like starting, to be a starter in the All Star game as a sitter is damn near, damn near impossible now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you're going to have to be like. But the sinners back then were different. Joker. Though. I mean, you're yeah. talking about like you have to be the 90 sinners. Like, like, yeah. like, we're talking about the 90 sinners, though. Like, back no. to the best. Dave Robinson, Patrick Ewing, like, these are. Like we don't we don't have that right now. But now, what, now what, but if you took this if you took that position out, those same centers would have to go against power forwards now too. So some of them centers wouldn't have the All Star games that they have, no matter what kind of name they are. If you add in all the wings that have to compete with them, they don't have those same accolades. But how, okay, if we do put the center position in there, I mean, how many centers are still going to make it? There's always a starter and a backup. <laughs> Period. It's supposed to be. Anyway. Yeah, right. So supposed to be. That's it. Back up and then possibly a third. So you're gonna at least have two to three. I just think it's more just guard heavy now. Like it's just it's just so guard. The, the game is different and it's just guard heavy. But so it's still, like you, I mean, but I you still m- moving the All Star game into more like a, just a, a, like votes. Like even if you had five guards, mm-hmm. like. That's but they won't start. They, they they're still pulling forwards. I that's just feel like at some point that's what it's gonna be like. It's not gonna matter what position it's gonna. Well, it's be like all NBA ever, team. There's a potential yeah, now for it to be is, just all guards. The oh, so you're, there's you're a potential I mean? now for it to be a, a team full. Oh, see now that's that is the nah. damn, There's no such thing as pos- positionless. I'm just. Yeah, it's not a real thing. I didn't make positionless. Is not a real thing. It's just big man who can do little man stuff. It's never a little man who can do big man shit. Right? Then let me know the day when John Morant. Steph Curry and Dame Leonard plays the five. All right, let me know when they can go down there and start playing the five against five men. Like, it's just a dumb shit. It's just one way. It's just big man who can dribble and pass. He was like, oh, this is positionless basketball. Let me know when the guards can do big man shit. All right? I think you're missing the point. Of no, I'm not missing the point. I just don't yeah, listen to fucking a bunch of player or people who go through school just when renaming shit. you talk about shit. positionless basketball, it really means just the movement of the ball. You don't have to stay in your position. Like, if you're a big man, you don't have to stay in the paint. Like you can move around. Imagine the motion offense, right? Where every position moves in that same star. That's what was positionless basketball. Did they name it positionless when the motion was actually a thing? Yeah, in no. Europe. In Europe, I played in Europe. That's we play positionless basketball in Europe. A big girl can come up and set a screen for the guard top. She can catch it up there, also shoot it, pass whatever. She doesn't have to stay in the paint. I know UCLA. I know we know UCLA cut. We get it. All right. We get a UCLA cut. You always disrespect UCLA. 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 No, no, but I'm saying UCLA, UCLA no, cut is positionless. No, he's, he's the they same thing with they don't got an Arizona <laughs> cut. I'm saying the, pres- the you know the, Prince, the, the Princeton That's offense is positionless. Was, Everyone really touches the ball. About. But again, it's always going to be big man who can do little man stuff that gets the coin up positionless. Mm-hmm. It's just a five man who can guard one through five or who can bring the ball down the court. It's never the opposite, which means it's not positionless. Positionless I'm means everyone point. can actually do everything. Yeah, can be anywhere, not necessarily do Be anywhere, anywhere. everyone can. Okay, but show, you're me, saying show me can. Steph Curry in the post, posting people up and posting up five. No, when let I me see where up, Steph Curry is, is, put, is defending the five man. Let control. me see where that, that is not happening. It's, you have have it's so, just the big doing the little man stuff. It wasn't yeah. a big man guarding me, it was a guard guarding me. But, so but, Thomas, awesome. for you, how hard is it be, to be a center in a modern game? Just with, with all those different factors and variables in place now and I being mean, asked to do so much. For me, it's, I mean, it's difficult, of course, but like for me, the one thing that always stuck out with me ever since I was younger was that I could shoot. You know, and during that time when I was coming up, they were transitioning to like, okay, we want bigs to, you know, have a jumper now and everything. So for me, 
that category, like, yeah, it's, it's tough now because bigs aren't really valued, but at least I know for myself at a young age, I was able to shoot, that I could just bring. I know, like, one thing that I'm going to always be able to translate is, like, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life, I'm going to be a help side shot blocker, but I'm going to always be able to knock down this open three. Mm -hmm. mm. That's one thing I'm always saying. You see me wide open for a three ball, this motherfucker going in. <laughs> <laughs> but was that something that you were, you know, because we talk about this all the time. Back in the day, if you were your height, it was like, get your ass in the post. Exactly. Don't even think about yeah. shooting yeah. three. Yeah. yeah when I was was you just doing your own work, or was that something you were encouraged to do by coaches? It's that was funny. always me. That was always me, because I always felt like, bro, you got to do more than just a jump hook. Like, you ain't got no little jumper there. Like, you ain't got no free throw jumper or nothing like that. Like, there's going to be times where guys are going to be stronger than you. You're not going to be able to get a bump in, jump hook post all the time, bro. You got to have some skill work to it. And it's yeah, always, at least have some touch. It's always good to always add things to your game every Absolutely. year anyway. You know, if you, it doesn't, you don't have to come in with everything, but as the years go on, right. you continue to add things to your game. Who's your, who was you watching then growing up? I used to watch KG. Mm. I used to watch Tim Duncan. Of course, LeBron. Tony Allen. Uh... He said Tony Allen? Yeah, okay. just because he was hype. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Memphis Grizzly well, stuff, right? Dog. It was dogs. He was, he was a dog. <laughs> uh, Jeff Green from all the times. I'm seeing him throughout the time. And uh, see who else? Of course, LeBron. Mm. Like, you're seeing those guys. But, like, it was mostly Tim Duncan and KG for a lot of the standpoint. I love KG because how intense he was. Mm -hmm. He was a skinny guy just like me, but always played with the a great amount of energy, didn't care what people thought about him. I'm bringing it every die up, every night. I don't care if you like it or not. <laughs> so this last question for you. What advice would you give to a young star, big man coming out of high school about what it takes to be able to stick into the league now? My advice would be as a young, as a young cat, don't, don't come in feeling like, you, like you're self-entitled. I hate the self-entitlement from especially young kids, it's like, you ain't do nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm. I mean, what are you gonna do when you play against Steph and Dame and all that? Like, yeah, yeah. motherfuckers see that, you gonna, gonna get dropped 40 on. Now you gonna get talked about on ESPN. <laughs> yeah. But then like, I would say, be in the, try and be in the best condition, best shape of your life. Coaches hate when young guys don't come in shape, because it's like, now I gotta teach you this, and I gotta also teach you to be in shape too. I'm not trying to do that. Yeah. Coaches are not trying to do that. Players are not trying to do that. Hold yourself accountable. Be in the best shape of your life. Be a sponge. Get into the film work. Learn what you have to do. Ask your coaches, what is, what is one thing or two things that I can bring to you that will contribute to me you know, getting some playing time or seeing the floor playing alongside any of these guys? Mm -hmm. because, if, because when you're a young kid, especially a big, you're not going to get the ball like that. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to run the floor, set a pick, roll, rebound, block shots, you know, be a great teammate, and it gradually it's going to come. But... You have to learn to build that confidence with your teammates at first. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be spells to where it's like you're probably not going to play. You probably will play. Then all of a sudden you're not going to play. <laughs> it's going to be like that. It's an 82-game season, man. Yeah. You got to stay even killed through this. Mm -hmm. You can't get too high, too low about it. And if you do have a good game, don't get too high about it because next game you can get your ass killed. Mm -hmm. And it most likely will happen if you get too high about it because they see you Fuck is this rookie? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you made this, you did this? Nah, that ain't happening today. <laughs> you become a target. Damn. Exactly. Yeah. You become a target right then and there. <laughs> yeah, I just remember some of those though. Paul Pierce. So like uh, you know, rookie in there sitting there getting hype. Uh -huh. And he'd be like, who is this? What is the name on this shirt? Yeah. <laughs> Blotch. Who's Blotch? We have Who is this? Blotch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that hurts your feelings right there. <laughs> Especially if you miss a shot too. Yeah. Yeah. They like, who is this? Yeah. Hell no! <laughs> Damn, that's so... Well, Tom, we appreciate you pulling up. We got a mostly fan segment, so if you want to stay for that, that's where fan ask questions. We would love to get your opinion and perspective, so... For sure. It'll take about five, ten minutes. It would depend on how, how many questions... We're spending $100. $100 for uh, questions now. All right, shit. 100 That was 50 100. I changed it. We're giving the fans whoever. It's, it's 50 as of today, <laughs> oh, but we can roll. Yeah, you can't be, uh, I'm going to get a nasty word of email on a phone call. Right. He goes, I don't, listen, I don't, I don't watch the group chat. So it ain't his money. I don't care what they saying in a group chat. But let's get into our mostly fan segment. Presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoop, whoop. If you have not done so already, go ahead, download the app, use promo code Gills Arena. I thought it was. Oh, it was close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, you know. Almost. It's all brand. I mean, damn near. I mean, 
But go ahead, download Underdog <laughs> Fantasy app. Use promo code Gills Arena. They'll match your first deposit up to $100. Again, for mostly fans, if we use your question, you put your Underdog username in there, you get a $50 bonus off top. 50 of Underdog money, not Gills. Right. I was just trying to throw an extra 50. You know put your money. You throw the 50. You make <laughs> So question number one, this comes from uh, Bird Jerby, and this is his underdog name. I don't know what that means. What was the best, worst high school game everyone played? Best, worst? What was the best and the worst high school? High school, high school game? game? Damn. I had a triple-double once in high school. I was hyped. I had 63 at Oak Hill, and I came out with five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Ooh, that's I was like, Steve Smith, what you doing? He was like, nah. He was like, I'm, I'm going to make sure nobody break this record. Oh, that's, that's racism. Yeah. That's, that's hate. <laughs> my, I want to say Crenshaw was mine, but it was one where I hit a... Uh, we went to triple overtime, and the first two overtimes, I hit the shot at the buzzer to get us to the next overtime. Right, So I hit two shots like to get us to overtime at the buzzer. And then, um, and then hit a game winner for the win the game. In Crenshaw? Wow. No, no, no. This is against a uh, oh, team called Crespi. Jump. Oh. Team called Crespi. Derek so they, Fisher. It was like it was like uh, the he Magic Man. Uh, <laughs> I only had like only had like thirty like thirty something. I only, only had like thirty, had like 30, 30 something. something. <laughs> I was having no, like forty eight. That wasn't a lot. That wasn't a lot for you back then. That was different. Yeah, 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 like forty eight. So it was it was a bad game. We used to pull the Daily News out. You know you was gonna be in second if he was playing that night because he's gonna have 45, 50, 53. Like my worst was shit. Sitting on the bench in JV. Yeah. <laughs> I think my worst is like All Star Game ABCD camp uh, when I uh, when Corey loses like when Corey Fisher broke my ankles. Mm. Like it was just an embarrassment in New York and like New York guard coming down and he hitting you with a move. I remember fell Jay Z and him was sitting right there. I was Ooh. yeah Jay Z at your game. Yeah ABCD camp. Yeah. My my worst high school game. I'm not gonna say worst game, but my freshman year of high school. I should have been on varsity, probably backup point guard, but I, they started me on the freshman team because no one was going to the games and nobody could actually score the basketball. And they begged me to stay on the freshman team. There was games where I was the only person that scored on my whole team. I was, I hated the whole season. I was, and we played outside. We didn't even play in the gym. We played all our games outside. I was so mad. What was it 1950? What, what year was this? He said 19, what? Outside, I'm just, what, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just It was 89. Oh. Oh, 89, I was just born. 1989. I'm, I'm just came out the womb. I, I mean, I, I didn't want to say, 89. I didn't want to call you old. I'm just saying, like, damn. It was 89. Playing yeah, basketball outside, that had to be a long time. The girls, the girls' freshman team, we played outside. I was upset, but I, I had a crazy year, but it, like, it was whack. Like, we lost all the games. I still scored a lot, but I was so upset. And then the next year, I started on varsity at the point. They didn't put you on JV? No, I refused. I shouldn't have been there from the beginning. No, right to starting on varsity, sophomore year. Thomas, how about yourself? Mine, I had like, I had 41, and I only made like one three. And I was like, it, it was just talking shit and everything. And I'm just like, bruh, I'm really about to kill y'all. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, do you understand? I was like, I had eight points at the end of the first quarter. They were like, bro, you can't do now. I'm like, y'all really think y'all can guard me? Mm. So I had like, I went off for like 13 straight. I'm just talking, I'm just talking to the guys on the bench. I'm just like, yo, you, you can't guard me. You can't fuck with me. You can't fuck with me. Your man's out here can't mess with me. You gonna need some help. <laughs> Ended up having 41 with like four with like four or five minutes left in the fourth, and I just subbed myself up. <laughs> Awesome. We won the game by like 27. I'm like, bro, you can't mess with me. And there was another one. Go where for the 50. Yeah, I wanted to. I was, I'm <laughs> keep, I was keep like, bro, I'm, 41, bro. I'm done. He Get me good. up out of here, right? But that's not, once you get the comfort over the 40, though, too, that is a 39, though, you got to stay in. Then I had a triple overtime game at AAU against Spice. And it was like towards the end of the fourth where I had like 15 straight because the whole time I'm telling coach, like, bro, just pass me the ball. Pass me the ball. So I just like, so I was just like, you know what? This, I'm just, my mom was still mad at me to this day. I'm just cussing all out <laughs> for it and everything. I'm like, these motherfuckers ain't gonna pass me the ball. I ain't bet. I got it. I do it myself. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm shooting the ball. Every time I get it, it's going in. I'm getting rebounds. I got one where I pushed it up, shot a three, made it, finesse one, went under and under, and we end up winning. End up winning the game. And I had to go to the hospital that night. Hey. Oh. Yeah. What happened? What? It was something wrong with my stomach. I, I think I almost had to get my appendix pulled that night. Ooh. 
Mm-hmm. And they want me to stop after the second OT. But I'm like, nah, bro, I'm about to win this game. We about to win this game. <laughs> Should have labeled that one right there. That was, was your a good worst? one. Right. I mean, in high school, I didn't really have a worst. <laughs> no weaknesses. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Question number two is for underdog username. Gil, you'll appreciate this. Blue Duck, but D U C C. So. Crip. Why would I appreciate that? I'm t- you're all blue, Gil. Crip. Oh, forgot. You, you already, you know. Crip is I forgot. Call for real. <laughs> Gil's Arena. <laughs> Arena. I forgot. forgot. Gil's Karina. Um, if you could have played, played another sport professionally, what would it be? Ooh. Can I go first? Tennis. Tennis. I actually feel like I probably would have chosen tennis as a professional sport had I been introduced to it much younger. Like, I, I feel like a, like a one-on-one game for me. I feel like I would have accomplished more. I would have got way more done, made, made more money. Like, now I've been playing 13 years, and I'm, I'm dogging people right now. And, but... It's too late. I can't go pro. You know what I'm saying? But I would have definitely played tennis easy. Like she didn't say golf. <laughs> I'm just saying, like she didn't say golf. I'm just beat Like she didn't say golf. I can't stand you. I just got my first birdie yesterday, too. He hating. He is That's a still hater. Question. That's We're still questioning question. that one. Oh, God. Yeah, how about yourself? Um, I would originally said football. But I remember, no I remember at twelve how when I got hit, how that felt. Yep. So yeah, I'm you know it was much harder on that next level. So I would just say run track. Okay. You a runner? You a track star? Yeah. Okay. I'm definitely going football. Nah, what, I heard, what position? Did you play? What position? Yeah, wide receiver or mm-hmm. or safety. Nah, safety. Nah, nah, BJ. Why? Don't do that to yourself. Well, I can catch. No. Safety, you're going to have that little thing right here. Safety is a defensive player that tackles the running back. That means you have to really... The running back. The running back. I'm way in the... I'm in the back. I know. No. I'm in the back. I'm the safety. Safety is also the person responsible for the running back. I cover football. Stop playing with me. Uh, A safety, you have to really lose your mind and really be out there ready to die for this shit. That's man to man coverage right here. I mean... It don't even matter. (laughs) Who? Me? I mean, her husband's a football player, so I'm pretty sure she... I covered football for 14 years. Safety covers the running back. The safety is the, the, the assistant for the DBs, but your main number one position is to watch the running back. If they don't run the ball, then you become a coverage person. Well, yeah, yeah. But... but it, I'm, I'm still I want to be on defense. I don't... Yeah. Like, I, I felt how yeah, I, I want to be on defense. I, when I got hit, I, I, I was going to join the band. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> 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 I could be out here at halftime. <laughs> Shit. Could be any any sport, other sports you play professionally? I wouldn't say professionally. The other one I was really good at was just f- football. My brother was a pro at baseball. Okay. Mm. But, what position mm. football? Tight end. Tight end and defensive back. That fits. I would say just put your fits. big ass in to block field goals. I've always had this vision, like bow ball, Wimby, all right, just straight field goal block. OD for sure. <laughs> Yeah, jump up, taco but, fall, just jump your big ass up and block this. You have to be on that line with those other big people, and there's a Put somebody in front that. of them. They will knock you to the ground. Just put somebody in front of his big like that. Yeah. strategy with well, them the boys. Chat, the chat says 100% she's right. What? Oh, my boy. That, uh, the safety? The safety. Uh-huh. I, 14 years I've been covering football. We got a football player, Trevor. Do- I should know what I'm doing. Is that, said the, I was that the USC strategy? You said you was wrong. I you did. You did. It's a pass, man. That means Say again? I, I, there's, 11, there's 11 defenders on the field. Yes. If the running back is not carrying the ball, it's, it's a pass. Yes. So that means the defensive line is doing that the linebacker is doing that in the safety. No. No. Going at, if, if I the said running, they're the backup for the secondary. They're in the secondary. They cup, they're backup for the corners if there's a pass. But when the ball is hiked, the safety's first number one position is the running back. If the running back runs in motion, most times the safety has to move as well. Not my sport, so I don't. But did the chat saying I'm right? Chat saying you're right. A lot it. of people in the chat. All right, so last question. This comes from underdog username BMAC32. He said, uh, BMAC32. Need that 50, need that 50, Josiah. So here, <laughs> first player to cross you or dunk on you in the league. Gil, you go first. Cross you or dunk on you. You don't have to say both. Whatever one you feel. More comfortable that we can't Google search and run on it. 
upcoming episode. I mean, when I listen, um, there was a guard. I mean, the most embarrassing one was a guard in Toronto, big guard, and he did some awkward ass move. Didn't even dribble, like he did mid, uh, <laughs> pinch post, uh -huh. and did you know how like you jab here? He jabbed across his body here and here, and I didn't know what you happened know what? and dropped. <laughs> he lost you. Oh yeah, I dropped. Like he ain't even just. Uh, uh, uh. And, I just like, <laughs> and I grabbed his leg and everything, bro. Foul, man. I don't know what this was, but he got me. But yeah, that was my most embarrassing one. Derrick Rose. How he get you? Yeah, we got that on film, I think. Oh. We said there's a highlight. We got yeah, that in the highlight. Probably yeah. He spent me all the way around. No, yeah, you got He's spent. Funny. We seen that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, he got me bad. Yeah, he got me bad. Derrick Rose for sure. I got that was your, that was your, you ain't I'll, falling then? No, I ain't fall, but I was like going all. No, no, the way. so you ain't never fell in, in NBA the, in the league. No, I don't think so. Oh, then I, oh, I don't think so. I, I got you sure? Because you know the chat. We got, I mean, I mean they probably look it up. I mean, but I think the Derrick Rose one was bad. No, yeah, that was a bad one. Like he, I was going way <laughs> over here. He went that way. <laughs> yeah. I was like, damn. Oh, really <laughs> well, that was that. Uh huh. Yep. That was that. I wasn't really getting crossed like that, but only person's ever dunked on me was my college boyfriend. He, he dunked on me. I broke up with his ass. <laughs> we were just playing around. And he, that's the only time I've ever been dunked on. And I, and I, I hate, that's, a, that's a bad feeling. I don't know how y'all just let love. that. Live, never, uh, living basketball guy. Wait, dunked on, uh, you wasn't going through his phone. <laughs> <laughs> he dunked on me. And I fell. I fell. Like, I almost hurt myself, too. I was pissed. How do y'all let like like that's a that brought a rage out of me. So I couldn't imagine if girls was dunking like that and that was happening to me on the regular. I would be pissed. Like that's that's and, and, and like you, you probably get dunked on. You dunk on people. It's like nothing, right? It's I mean, just yeah, I'd rather get I'd rather get dunked on than touch earth. Oh, I'm not gonna lie to you. Has anybody ever crossed you? You already said the the dunk. I had one when I was in Washington. I had an actually great defensive. I was I was locking shit up, but it was like. We needed a stop. Ooh. I'm like, if he got me. Slapped the I, ground? Nah, I ain't slapped the ground, but I'm like, I got it, I got it. You know, I, I guarded him before. He came with me, he sized me up, hit me with a hezzy, and then snatched the hell out of me. And then shot it, it was like, got it, before he even went in. And you was Who was that? Nah, I was like, oh shit. And I contested, game over. For the win. Who was it? It wasn't even for the win. It was just oh, like we needed, <laughs> we needed a stop. Mm -hmm. uh, if we would have got the stop, we had a chance to tie yeah. or take the lead. Mm -hmm. Hell no. Nah. Who was it? I think it was Darren Collison or something like that. He played for the Pacers. It was just so he just Collison had that. Darren Collison yeah. had that. Yeah. No, she snatched me. Huh. He had like a different snatched awkward game. His, his game was. Like, and all you could hear was like, oh, that's the worst, worst feeling. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's the worst <laughs> feeling right there. Yeah. You start looking like, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, bet. Bet. Oh, bet. Bet. oh, okay. Bet. 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 All you bet. <laughs> Count your days. Next bet. time we play, y'all. <laughs> uh -huh. Damn. So, Thomas, you got a camp that you got coming up soon. So, you pulled up on us now. You can go ahead and promote it to our millions and millions, minus <laughs> millions of. Uh, <laughs> said minus millions. Of Gills Arena's fans, far, near, and wide. <laughs> Yes, I'm having a free basketball camp for the kids back in Rochester, New York, where I'm from, just to give back to my community. And it's just like, you know, little things like that. I've always got so hyped just to meet like minor league people. Mm -hmm. So it's just just like giving back to my community in that shape, way, and form, like any way that in that aspect means a lot to me. You know, just spending time with the kids and let them see a face that's actually from the area mm -hmm. to say like, yo, there's a... There's, there's somebody that made it out of here. It doesn't have to be in all like athletics or anything like that, like, but there's a way. I mean, for me, I'm the first person to really get out of Rochester, New York. Nobody's ever seen anybody do anything big like that. So I take that with a, with a big accountability and I take that with pride. And then like, for me, just doing that, also, I'm also trying to do this backpack drive with the kids, you know, mm -hmm. from like kids that don't have the means of like getting stuff for back to school stuff for back to school. All right, come on, let's go get your stuff. That's let's bad. make sure you straight for the school. You ain't got a book bag. All right, bet. Let's go get let's get you a book bag. Even if the kid don't got no shoes, I remember I got I got so many shoes at home that to where I hit up one of the guys. I'm like, yo, you got any you got any people that need some shoes back there? 
you know, wear this size and everything. Hell yeah, bro. What size you wear? That's 14, all I'm about 15. To say. Well, shit, you know, I wear a 14, 15, too, and I'm going to be honest. Gil you know, Gil don't really pay like that, so, you know, we, we're. That's crazy. I'm just going to be real. You know, so just if you want to divert some before you get about to ride, no, I'm just kidding. No, we're going to take care of when, when is that basketball camp, though? It's towards the end of the month, 24th and 25th of this, okay. of this month. Okay. So if you're in Rochester and you like free shit, August 24th, August 25th, Thomas Bryant doing a free camp for the community pull-up. Where can they get more information on it? Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. I mean, Wait, can they, on your IG website, or where, where can they find out? Oh, it'll be I'll be posting it today or okay. tomorrow. Okay. okay. If you check out my Instagram, it'll be it'll be I'll be it'll be an actual post. And I'll put like the link to sign up for the camp in my bio. So link in bio. Should everybody from New York just show up? For real. It's free. Yeah, it's yeah. free. Free ninety nine. If you need a free yeah, backpack, they send free free uh look, COVID shots and cheese. They better bring their ass down there, get some backpacks <laughs> and some skills. That's what I'm saying. Just be honest, right? Yeah. Shit. Yeah, that's you know, all. Something that can help you in life. What? <laughs> exactly. Yo, this nigga said cheese. Where did cheese. the cheese come from? You just keeping it real. <laughs> Hey, right, well, Thomas, we appreciate you pulling up, man. Best of luck to you in Miami this season. Thank you, you for coming I into the arena. We're going to be watching you. You know, when you come play the Lakers, though, you know, we can't really fuck with you, unfortunately. That's all good. Want you to perform. We got, we got you. Want That's you to perform. I, I understand it. Want you to perform, but want the Lakers. No, no, no. You got no, him. No, you got him. He's going to be right with, right with you all year. Confidence coffee. Yeah, he's going to be right with you all year. He's going to be right with you all year. Confidence coffee. I know what you can do. Don't even worry. Look, look, look. look. He can't, look, he can't wait. Don't even worry. The coffee is flowing. He can't wait. He can't wait. Don't even This has been another episode of Gills Arena. Appreciate you, everybody in the chat. We appreciate you the underdog fantasy. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. We'll be back tomorrow, Wednesday. See y'all then. Yes. Look, with the honor called the greatness, the chosen, the few, that carry the gift of genius, who do what they do.